On day one, I spawned in as Demon Steve with five hearts. Oh, wow, Demon Steve? Maybe this means I should cause some mischief. Nothing too serious, of course, just some fun little pranks. But I probably shouldn't have said that out loud, because as soon as I did, a huge iron golem knight came barreling towards me across the prairie. He was easily twice my size and scarily fast for how big he was. Oh. Halt, foul demon. You have no business in these lands. I will destroy you now, for I am the brave knight, Sir Slashalot, and it is my duty to destroy evil. Wait, I'm not evil. I'm just a little mischievous. I don't deserve to be destroyed. All demons deserve to be destroyed, and I have made it my life's mission to do so. It's why I'm the good guy here. Now have at thee. It's time to meet your doom, demon. Sir Slashalot didn't waste any time. He immediately tried to slash me in half. I guess that's how he got his name, so I tried to hit him back. When I hit him, he took some fire damage. That must mean that as a demon, my punches have a natural fire aspect enchantment. That's so cool! But I was still no match for the knight. I made a run for it further into the prairie until I couldn't see him anymore. I stopped for a moment to rest. Jeez, it isn't easy being a demon. Then I was attacked by a bunch of fallen soldiers with a bone to pick. Thankfully, my fire punches were really helpful in defeating them before they could deal me any real damage. After they were finished, I found some shelter under a tree to finally get some sleep. I guess people really hate demons in this world. I wonder if I can still get by, even if nobody believes in me here. On day two, I decided that if nobody was going to take care of me, I'd at least take care of myself. I punched down some trees with my powerful fire punch and used the remains to build myself a wooden pickaxe. This was perfect for digging into the ground and getting enough stone to build a complete stone tool set, including a stone sword. Now I'm ready to explore the world and maybe do a little demon pranking too. I traveled from the prairie to the Red Rock Valley, which seemed like a fun place for a demon to hang out. Once I arrived, I found a nice clear area where I'd have plenty of space to build a base. I used some of the material I collected to start building a cool little demon pad where I could hang out and avoid Sir Slashlot and his men. It was pretty basic at first, with only a room to sleep and a room to hang out in. But when it was done, I took in all my hard work and felt happy. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. And clearly, my building attracted some attention because I was soon attacked by a roving concrete golem. We fought, and believe me, he was as tough as, well, concrete. But in the end, I managed to get the upper hand and defeat him. But it made me realize how strong stone could be. Using a crafting bench I added to my base, I decided to build myself a full set of stone armor. Sometimes the best offense is a good defense. With all this work done, I added a bed to my bedroom and settled down to sleep. On day three, I traveled from the Red Rock Valley over to the forest where I could collect some more wooden blocks for my base. Even when you're a demon, you just can't beat the class of hardwood flooring. I cut down a few trees and collected all the wood blocks. Just when I was about to take the rest of the day off, a behemoth suddenly ran out of the woods and started attacking me. This is the last thing I need today. I equipped my sword and started fighting back. But even with my demon strength, I was still too weak to go toe to toe with him. Instead, I turned around and made a run for it, traveling deeper into the forest. That's when I ran into a hellhound. Hey, hellhound, I'm Zozo, and I'm a demonic creature too. What are you doing all the way out here in the forest? Probably the same thing you're doing, trying to avoid Sir Slashlot and his band of not-so-merry knights. They've been coming down hard on anything even vaguely demonic. I lost one of my hellhound brothers to his raids. Oh no, that's awful! Tell you what, hellhound, I think we should stick together. Come stay at my base with me. There's safety in numbers, right? Huh, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Lead the way, Zozo. From day four to day five, I returned to the base in the Red Rock Valley with my new friend, the Hellhound. Because he probably didn't want to sleep in my room with me, I instead started building a kennel where he could live, one that would suit his needs perfectly. By the time it was done, it looked like the Hellhound could settle in nicely. It was a job well done. But sadly, it wasn't time for me to rest just yet because I saw a high reaver skulking around the outside of my base. He was someone I needed to deal with before things got too out of hand. No trespassers allowed, Reaver! I ran out and fought him with my stone sword, surprising him with how tough I was, even though I wasn't that experienced. It must have been that demon confidence serving me well. Soon enough, the high reaver was defeated, and he left me a gift. 
A bow dropped to the ground, ripe for the taking. So I did. Now I have a long range attack too. This is perfect. From day six to day eight, I went out to the plains in search of more resources. If nothing else, I could probably find some more stone to make my base bigger. However, while I was out there, just minding my own business, I was suddenly ambushed by Sir Slashalot himself. Uh-oh. You thought you could escape me, foolish demon? But nobody escapes Sir Slashalot. It is my righteous purpose to hunt down and slay every single one of you. And now, with my new divine blade, which is extra dangerous to demonic beings, I'll finally be able to carry out my mission. Sure, but you'll have to catch me first. I ran as fast as I could, while the crazed Sir Slashalot chased me. As I ran, I knew that I'd have no hope of stopping him. For now, the best I could do to survive was just run away as fast as I could and hope that he didn't catch me. During the chase, I even ran out of the plains and into the cover of the forest. Sir Slashalot kept chasing me, but I'd built enough distance between us to hide behind a tree. I stayed very still and very quiet while Sir Slashalot searched. To my relief, he didn't seem to find me. You can't hide forever, demon. I'll search for you to the ends of the earth and back if I have to. Even if you hide in the deepest cracks and crannies of the nether or the dark mists of the end, mark my words, I will find you and I will destroy you. After that, Sir Slashalot left. I was safe again, for now. He was right though, I couldn't hide from him forever. I needed to get stronger, I needed to defeat him. From day nine to day 10, I returned to my base and wondered what I could do to start getting stronger, strong enough to take on Sir Slashalot. I went into the Hellhound's kennel to ask him for some ideas on what to do. I think maybe you need some inspiration, Zozo. You're getting too stuck in your head about all this. If you want to be big and strong, you need to picture it. Maybe start building a statue of what you'd like to be like. Oh, that's a really neat idea, Hellhound. I'm gonna get right on it. I collected some material from the area around my base and cleared a plot of land for me to start building my statue. I wanted to build a statue of a huge, powerful winged demon, just like I wanted to be after all my training. Once I'd laid the foundations and made the start of my statue, I went back to my base and decided to make a fireplace. After all, demons love fire. As soon as it was done, I sat back and warmed myself with the flames. Maybe everything would turn out to be all right in the end, if I tried my hardest. From day 11 to day 12, I went further than I'd ever gone before, venturing into the dark depths of the Black Forest, not knowing what I might find in there. I hoped, at least, that I wouldn't find Sir Slashalot waiting for me. Instead, I ran into a Gorgon. She was warming herself next to a campfire she'd built, and she noticed me as I approached. Who goes there? Are you here to interfere with me? If you come any closer, I'll turn you to stone. Wait, hold on a second. I'm not here to interfere with anyone. I'm just out here trying to avoid Sir Slashalot. He's been on my tail for almost two weeks now. Ah, Sir Slashalot. That makes sense. He's been making trouble around the overworld for decades now. I've been around for all of it, and it seems he's only getting worse. Worse? You seem to know a lot, Miss Gorgon. Can you maybe tell me where Sir Slashalot came from? Well, long ago there was a village that was often under attack by demons and other demonic creatures. In order to protect the village, a powerful wizard created his special knight version of an iron golem. His purpose was to protect the villagers by destroying demons. But there was a problem, you see. Over time, the relations between the village and the demons smoothed over. Some demons even chose to live peacefully among the villagers. But this special iron golem, he didn't know how to take this. He wasn't even built to imagine that humans and demons could ever get along. So he went mad, and in his madness he destroyed the entire village, leaving no demons or villagers left. Now he roves the world, picking up others who share his mission, with the goal of eliminating demons and any who are kind to them. If you want to defeat him, you're going to need everything you've got, Zozo. From day 13 to day 15, with the story the Gorgon told me still ringing through my mind, I decided I needed to stand up for myself and settle an old score. I went back to the forest where I'd first met my friend the Hellhound, and I hunted down the behemoth that had given me so much trouble the first time I got there. But this time, I decided to try a different tactic. Rather than engaging directly, I took out the bow I'd taken from the High Reaver and took the behemoth on from a distance. This time, it only took a few well-placed arrows to defeat the beast, and the XP it gave me let me level up. I got bigger, stronger, and got 15 hearts. 
Oh, wow! And what's this new ability? I could now draw on my demon powers to use a ranged fireball attack. It took a lot of energy, so I couldn't use it often, but it was still a really cool power to have in my back pocket just in case. From day 16 to day 19, after deciding this would be a great time to invest in some upgrades for all my equipment, I started mining underground, searching for some veins of iron ore. But during my search, I also found a bunch of nasty cave spiders who weren't eager to have company. Looks like I gotta do a little pest control down here. I unleashed a fireball that blasted most of the cave spiders immediately. The last couple ran away after that, not wanting to get in any more trouble with me. Sometimes, being a demon can have its perks. I searched deeper until I found some veins of iron ore, mined them, and collected them. Then I took them back to my base for crafting. I built a furnace on my base and used it to smelt the iron ore into iron ingots. Then, with the help of a little extra wood, I made myself a full set of iron gear, including an iron pickaxe, a shield, and an iron sword. Now I've got an iron will and an iron loadout. From day 20 to day 22, I was chilling at my base when suddenly Hellhound ran in to warn me about something. He looked worried and frantic. What's going on, Hellhound? Zozo, it's an emergency! Sir Slashlot is outside right now! You need to go stop him or he'll destroy the whole base! There was no time to waste! I equipped my iron sword and shield and ran out to face Sir Slashlot, who was waiting for me at the base's entrance. Impressive! I was worried you wouldn't even come face me, demon! Perhaps you're a little less cowardly than I thought. I'm no coward, Sir Slashalot, but I also don't want to fight you unless I absolutely have to. You're making a big mistake trying to destroy all the demons. Most of us are just trying to get by. I don't believe you, demon! You're just trying to trick me, but I won't fall for it! I'll destroy every last one of you! With that, Sir Slashalot attacked me, and I fought back! Even though his divine sword was powerful, my shield helped me block a lot of the damage, and my iron sword was a formidable weapon. Despite this, I started to get worried that I might lose the fight, so I pulled out the big guns and hit him with a fireball. That made him stop fighting me and fall back. This isn't over, Zozo. I will return and slay you and all the rest. After that, he ran away. I felt lucky to be alive after such an intense fight, but for a second there, it felt like I really had him on the ropes. If I keep training and upgrading my gear, maybe I can truly defeat Sir Slashlot and his evil forces. From day 23 to day 26, I went underground to search for some new, interesting materials and found myself in the middle of the lush caves. This is great! Demons naturally love being underground, so this suits me just fine. As I searched, I found something extremely valuable! A protection enchantment! This would help me protect myself and ward off attacks from Sir Slashalot. And if you want to protect yourself from boredom, believe me, the best way to do it is to search ZO ZO in your search bar for more exciting Zozo adventures. From day 27 to day 31, I continued to work on my statue. It was looking pretty good if I do say so myself, but I couldn't shake this feeling that something was missing. Oh, I know. This statue needs some red terracotta. I'll go to the eroded badlands to find some. So I grabbed my gear and left my base, making my way out to the eroded badlands to hunt for some new material. I hadn't heard from Sir Slashlot in days, so I was feeling pretty good about my progress. I eventually reached an area where there was plenty of red terracotta, but just by luck, there was a gang of mutant hoglins guarding it. I needed to do some battling today after all. Ready to see how a demon fights hoglins? I ran in with my sword and shield, blocking their attacks and returning mine. It didn't take me long to defeat the entire group, then collect all the material I needed for the next part of my statue. Come to Zozo! After collecting all the material, I went back to my base and continued working on the statue. It was coming along great! From day 32 to day 35, I decided it was time to go and explore a biome I'd never been to before, the Snowy Plains! Demons don't naturally like the cold, so I figured being out in the snow would help me toughen up to fight Sir Slash a lot. And that toughness was about to come in majorly handy because it didn't take long for a big, nasty snow golem to run in, ready for a fight. Ready to kick some frosty butt, I pulled out my sword and took him on. He had the home field advantage, but I wouldn't give up. Soon enough, I was able to take him down with my sword. Once I defeated the snow golem, I kept moving until I ran into a crying snow fox standing in the middle of the snow. What's wrong, little snow fox? 
The Dread Lich of the Snowy Plains stole my favorite guitar, and he wouldn't give it back. I'm not strong enough to fight him myself, so I don't know what to do. Don't worry, little snow fox. I may be a demon, but I'm a helpful demon. So I'll go get your guitar back, or my name isn't Zozo. Oh, thank you so much, Zozo. You're amazing. From day 36 to day 39, I took some directions from the sad snow fox and ventured deeper into the snowy plains to find the Dread Lich. It didn't take me long because I could hear his terrible, out of tune guitar playing before I even ran into him. I hid behind a rock and watched as the Dread Lich played the guitar badly. But even if he was a bad guitar player, he still looked pretty tough. From here, I could also see he was keeping an innocent green pixie in a cage too. This guy was the master of taking things that didn't belong to him. At least he seemed pretty distracted by talking to the pixie. So, what do you think? Pretty sick track, right? I told you it was foolish not to accept my invitation into my band. We're gonna be the next One Direction. The only direction I wanna go is out of here, Dreadlich. An encore, you say? Coming right up. Please, no. Just like that, I formulated my plan. Using their sound as a distraction, I'd run right in, defeat the Dreadlich, free the Green Pixie, and get the Snow Fox's guitar back. From day 40 to day 43, I put my plan into action. It was time to make it all happen. While the Dreadlich was jamming out, terribly, in case you've forgotten, I snuck up behind him and prepared to strike him with my sword. But he spun around and hit me with his stolen guitar. It really hurt. How dare you interrupt my band practice, little demon? Me and the Green Pixie were on the verge of riding our Sergeant Pepper, but you just disrupted the flow. He's lying. He kidnapped me. Please help me out of here. Silence, or I'll do scales again. Oh, goodness, please, no! Before he could play any more terrible songs, I blasted a fireball at the Dreadlich. After that, he started attacking me again, but this time, I was ready to fight back. I used my sword and my shield, timing my blocks and attack perfectly. Soon, the Dreadlich was no more, and I used my sword to break open the Green Pixie's cage. I'm free! I'm free! Thank you, Zozo! I'll never forget this! I feel so grateful I'll never have to listen to the Dread Lich's lousy guitar playing again. I'm really more of a hip hop and R&B fan at heart. With the Dread Lich defeated and the Green Pixie freed, I traveled across the snowy plains again until I reached the Snow Fox. I found your guitar, little guy. It's super cool and actually a really effective weapon too. Thank you so much for getting it back for me, Zozo. I trust you, so you're welcome to borrow it if you want. That's so kind. How about you come live at my base for a while, too? Just so you have somewhere safe to stay. That sounds like an awesome idea. From day 44 to day 49, I returned to my base with the snow fox behind me, practicing on the sick guitar that he'd loaned me. It's true what they say. Demons are just naturally better at music. It must be why we make so many crossroads deals with famous musicians. I made a few upgrades to my base, including building a whole new room that the snow fox could sleep in while he was staying with me. This is such a cool room. Thanks, Zozo. I think I'm gonna really enjoy my time staying here. No problem, Snow Fox. You're always welcome here. And with the Snow Fox settling down, I decided to finish up day 49 by working on the statue. It was really coming along. I think things are about to get a whole lot better. From day 50 to day 53, things got a whole lot worse. Sir Slashlot returned to my base, and this time he brought friends, a group of Dread Knights. You've tested me for too long, Zozo. Now I'm going to have to get serious with you. These Dread Knights are completely devoted to my cause of wiping out every demon. What better place to start than with the most annoying one of all, you? With that, the Dread Knights advanced towards me while Sir Slashlot stood back and watched. I refused to be defeated in front of him. I'll take you all on. And I did. As the Dread Knights poured in, I shot a fireball and fought them all. One by one, I took them all out until none were left. By that time, Sir Slashalot was already gone. This battle gave me enough XP to level up once again. I got bigger, stronger, and now I had 30 hearts too. Not to mention a new power, Demon Skin, which made me completely immune to fire and lava damage. This is awesome! I can't believe that actually went well for me! But not everything was as peachy keen as I thought. Suddenly, the snow fox came running towards me. 
Zozo, I have bad news. I can't find the Hellhound anywhere. I think Sir Slashalot's Dread Knights might have just been a distraction for him to kidnap Hellhound. Oh no, this is horrible. We need to get him back as quickly as possible. From day 54 to day 57, I repaired some of the parts of my base that had been damaged during my battle with the Dread Knights. Then I started building a stronger, taller perimeter wall, so if Sir Slashlot tried attacking my base again, it wouldn't be so easy for him. Once I'd finished making the proper tweaks and upgrades to my base, I knew exactly what I needed to do next. Go back to the Black Forest and speak to the Gorgon. She seems like she really knows a lot about Sir Slashlot in his past, so maybe she can help me. I journeyed out into the Black Forest as quickly as I could, knowing that every second counted while Sir Slashlot and his men had the Hellhound captive. Luckily, I found the Gorgon in the exact same place, chilling out around a campfire. Oh, Demon Boy, you again. Is there something I can do for you? Or are you just here to warm yourself by the fire? It's an emergency, Miss Gorgon. My friend, the Hellhound, has been kidnapped by Sir Slashlot and his forces. I have no idea where he's taken them. Do you have any suggestions? Well, in the early days of his rampages, Sir Slashlot and his men would just rove from place to place, taking on different villages and bases as they went. But eventually, too many people started to band together and fight back. It was around that time that Sir Slashlot started building Castle Slashlot in the east. It was a dangerous castle with an extensive set of dungeons underneath. If your friend is still alive and being kept anywhere, I'd wager that it's probably there. Castle Slashalot in the east. That's exactly where I'll go. Thanks again for the help, Miss Gorgon. No problem, kid. And hey, when you're finally fighting old Slashalot, be sure to give him an extra wallop for me, will ya? Will do. From day 58 to day 62, I knew that I needed to upgrade my gear if I wanted any hope of surviving a journey into Castle Slashalot. I found the nearest diamond mine and ventured inside with my iron sword and pickaxe at the ready. Of course, it would never be as simple as just waltzing in there, grabbing some diamonds, and leaving. There were some skeletons in there waiting for me, and they didn't seem all that friendly. And I'm guessing you guys won't just let me through because I'm in a hurry today. They didn't respond, they just attacked me. So to keep them at bay, I blasted them with a fireball and attacked the rest with my sword. It didn't take me long to defeat all those skellies. I then pulled out my iron pickaxe and started mining for dear life until I'd collected a whole bunch of diamonds. Then I returned to my base to do some crafting and forging. I combined my diamonds with some wood I'd gathered and created a diamond pickaxe, diamond sword, and some diamond armor. Now I felt like I was ready for anything. From day 63 to day 66, after all this hard work and upgrading, I was almost ready to storm the dungeons of Castle Slashalot and rescue Hellhound. But first, to make sure my head was in the right space, I did a little more work on the statue. Seeing the big, strong demon I was building helped motivate me to know what really mattered. Getting big enough and strong enough to beat Sir Slashalot and save my friends. And if you want to help me on my mission to make friends, get strong, build cool bases, and defeat evil bad guys, hit subscribe and ring the little bell so you can join me on all of my exciting adventures. From day 67 to day 70, with my new power and diamond equipment, I knew that it was time to make my way to Castle Slashalot and rescue Hellhound from the evil knight's clutches. I traveled east, following the Gorgon's instructions, until I saw a sinister castle on the horizon and just knew that it had to be Castle Slashalot. And when I got closer and saw that the building was surrounded by Dread Knight guards, my suspicions were confirmed. I knew that Hellhound and Sir Slashalot were somewhere inside. I guess the only way in is just to fight my way through, but I need to be smart about this. I'll save my fireball power for Slashlot himself when I'm inside. First, I pulled out my bow and started firing at the Dread Knights. This took out a few of them and alerted the others to my position. It was time to fight up close and personal. I pulled out my diamond sword and ran into the battle, fighting off as many Dread Knights as I could. Thankfully, my diamond armor helped deflect the worst of their blows. Once all the Dread Knights were defeated, I ran into Castle Slashalot, searching for wherever I could find Hellhound. That's when I saw a tunnel that seemed to be leading deep into the ground. It must be the tunnel down into the dungeon. I need to get down there and save him. So I steeled myself and ran down into the dungeon, ready to do whatever I needed to save my friend. From day 71 to day 74, I entered the dungeon, searching for Hellhound. 
I saw a bunch of cells lining the walls, all empty, except one of them. And of course, that one cell had Hellhound waiting for me in it. He seemed so happy to see me there. Zozo, it's you! Thank you for coming to save me! Of course I'd save you, Hellhound. You're one of my best friends. Now stand back. I'm gonna bust you out of here. Hellhound stood back, and I used my diamond sword to smash open the door to his cell. Head back to the base, Hellhound. I'm gonna keep fighting my way through. Sir Slashlot can't keep getting away with all this. He needs to be defeated, here and now. Good luck, Zozo. I know that if anyone could take down that monster, it's you. With Hellhound released to safety, I could comfortably focus on my next mission, taking down the big boss. I continued to explore the dungeon. During my journey, more Dread Knights emerged and started attacking me. Lucky for me, with all my weapons and gear, they really weren't hard for me to defeat. Sir Slashlot should really start employing some tougher guys. These Dread Knights aren't even a challenge anymore. He should rename them Mild and Convenience Knights. Once the Dread Knights were defeated, I found a chest buried deep in the dungeons, containing one truly awesome item, a Dragon Bone Sword. This is an even better weapon for a demon than a diamond sword. Using this, Sir Slashlot doesn't stand a chance against me. With my brand new sword, I kept searching until I saw an unfamiliar door. This must have been one that led directly into Castle Slashalot's inner sanctum. Hope you're ready, Slashalot. This is one demon you can't get rid of. From day 75 to day 78, I entered the first chamber of Castle Slashalot's inner sanctum and found that the diabolical knight himself was waiting for me. Foul demon! You have defiled my castle with your presence, and you have taken my precious dragonbone sword from the dungeon! You've destroyed scores of my men, and worst of all, you've committed crimes against nature by existing as a demon! Is there anything in your vast list of crimes that I'm forgetting? Um, I think you're forgetting that time I hit you with a fireball, maybe? What? I don't remember such an event! Oh shoot, my bad. Sorry, I think I must have been thinking about it right now. I fired a fireball at Sir Slashlot, stunning him. That gave me a perfect opening. I ran in with my new Dragonbone sword at the ready and started attacking, hitting him again and again and again, not even giving him time to fight back. I could tell that Sir Slashlot was badly injured by my attack because he retreated away from me, holding a defensive position. You got lucky, Zozo, but you won't get lucky again! Luck has nothing to do with it, Slashalot. You just made the mistake of assuming that a demon could never be stronger than you, and that's why you're paying the price. You insolent little rat, I'll show you! Then Sir Slashalot turned around and ran, and all I could do was try to chase him! From day 79 to day 84, I chased the wounded Sir Slashalot deeper into his inner sanctum, ready to finish this once and for all! But of course, I should have known that it would never be so easy. As soon as I caught up to him, I could see that Sir Slashalot wasn't running anymore. He was just standing there, watching me. I have to hand it to you, demon. You've really pushed me to my limit here. And the Dragonbone Sword was a particularly ingenious touch. But I have one last trick still up my sleeve. Don't get scared now, Zozo. Suddenly, Sir Slashalot began to glow and transform. He became a bigger, more imposing version of himself. What? I don't understand. You don't need to understand, Zozo. You need only tremble before me. This is my final form, Ultimate Demon Crusader Sir Slashalot. Are you ready to meet your doom, Zozo? For the first time in a while, I felt truly afraid. All I could do was turn and run out of the inner sanctum in shame. Once again, I wasn't ready to face him. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, feeling really down after not being able to defeat Sir Slashalot in his new, more powerful form. I was lying in my bed, too depressed to even think about getting up and fighting, when I remembered something. My statue outside, it was almost finished. Even if I couldn't defeat Sir Slashlot, the least I could do is go out there and finish my statue. So that's what I did. I went outside, and using the rest of my gathered materials, I finished my statue. It looked magnificent, that strong, powerful demon. It reminded me of something important. If I keep trying and didn't give up, I could be that strong and even defeat Sir Slashlot in his stronger form. Yes. Just as I was starting to get my hope back, Hellhound approached me with some more good news. Zozo, you seem down, so I wanted to do something nice for you, since you rescued me from Sir Slashlot. 
I upgraded your sword. It's not just any dragon bone sword anymore. It's a flamed dragon bone sword. Oh my goodness, Hellhound. This is amazing. And it looks so much more powerful than my old sword. To unlock its true power, you need to journey into the nether's crimson forest and find the fire aspect enchantment. That will give you the punch you need to teach that armored bully some manners. From day 90 to day 94, I left my base and ventured out into a forest to the west after hearing rumors that there was a working nether portal somewhere deep in the woods. After searching for two whole days, I eventually found it, exactly what I needed. Guess it's now, or nether! I'm so glad nobody was here to hear that. I hopped into the portal and was immediately transported into the nether. Following the Hellhound's instructions, I kept searching until I found the Crimson Forest and kept a low profile to avoid upsetting some of the less friendly nether dwellers. Wow, this doesn't seem like a particularly nice neighborhood. Thankfully, nobody spotted me and decided to pick a fight. Instead, I just kept searching until I found an old chest hidden in the woods containing a book that had all the details of the fire aspect enchantment. Jackpot! Oh hey, what's that over there? I noticed a block with a strange color in the ground. It took me a second to realize what I was looking at. Ancient debris, one of the rarest blocks out there. Lucky for me, I already had my diamond pickaxe, which is the only thing that can mine ancient debris. I immediately started mining and picked up as many ancient debris blocks as I could carry. This is exactly what I need to give me an edge in the final battle. There's hope for me yet. From day 95 to day 97, I returned to my base one more time to make the final upgrades needed. Gathering that ancient debris was incredibly helpful because it would give me the ability to create some of the most powerful armor out there, even stronger than diamond. I took the ancient debris to my smelting furnace and smelted it until I had some nether scraps. That was the first stage of the process. Then I looked through my storage until I found some gold ingots, exactly what I needed. I crafted them together to make some handy netherite ingots, which I then fused with the diamond armor I created earlier. The result? Netherite armor! Some of the strongest armor there is, straight from the nether, and perfect for a demon like me! Let's see if Sir Slashalot can even put a scratch on me like this! But I wasn't done yet. Next, it was time to enchant. I created the unbreakable enchantment, one for each piece of my armor and for my prized weapon, the flamed dragon bone sword. Then, just in case things went south during the battle, I crafted a few healing potions, just in case I needed them. Before I set off to do what I needed to do, the hellhound approached me one more time to offer some words of advice. And remember, wait until just before the fight to activate your fire aspect and reach full power. He'll never expect it that way. You'll take him by surprise. Thank you for all of your help, Hellhound. I never could have gotten this far without you. Don't mention it, Zozo. I'd do it all again. Now get out there and show that rust bucket what we demons are made of. On day 98, I reached the outside of Castle Slashalot once more, and this time, I wouldn't chicken out. I'd take him on and defeat him once and for all! Do you believe I can do it? Let me know down there in the comments, along with whatever adventure you'd like me to take next. And be sure to search Zozo for more exciting Minecraft videos. On day 99, I returned to the place that I'd once run from, Castle Slashalot's inner sanctum! The way in wasn't even guarded, so I knew that Sir Slashlot in his ultimate demon crusader form wanted to defeat me himself. That was a mistake I'd make him regret. I entered and saw him standing there, waiting for me. He didn't even see intimidated, but then again, neither was I. It was the final standoff. We meet again, demon. This time, are you ready to accept your defeat with some dignity? Funny, I was just about to ask you the same thing. Such a sad comeback. Do you really think you can defeat me like this, Zozo? Perhaps not, but how about like this? I activated my fire aspect enchantment and began my own final upgrade. I became a huge, powerful demon, just like the one I'd built my statue around with a mighty 100 hearts. I wielded my flamed dragon bone sword, ready to bring this to an end. I could feel the anger coming off of Sir Slashlot as I squared up to him. Typical, cheating demon, can't fight fair to save his life. Man, I'm getting so sick of hearing you talk. We clashed for the last time, but now I was ready. 
As Sir Slashalot tried to attack me, I was fast and strong enough to block. And in the end, one decisive blow brought the evil knight down. I can't believe it. Defeated by a worthless demon. What a humiliating way to go. I punched him one last time, and then he was gone. On day 100, I returned to the base, having finally defeated Sir Slashalot and ended the threat that faced all demons and those who were kind to them. I met back up with the Hellhound and the Snow Fox, who'd been with me through all of this, and I used the Snow Fox's guitar to play us a rad victory song. Life was sweet once again. On day one, I spawned into the deep dark forest as a skeleton dragon, one of the coolest and spookiest kinds of dragons there is. Well, I guess I'm more of a baby skeleton dragon. I must have just come out of the skeleton altar. That's gotta be why I only have three hearts. And what's this in my inventory? A void worm eye? What would I use that for? That's when I saw a skeleton horse riding out of the trees towards me. For some reason, she looked worried. What are you doing here, baby skeleton dragon? I just got here. My name's Zozo. What's going on? It's dangerous to be in this forest at night. We need to get out of here. Before I could ask any more questions, I saw shadows in the dark between the trees. And suddenly, I felt uneasy. Zozo, we have to leave. Now! Mr. Dark is here! Mr. Dark? Who's Mr. A tall, shadowy figure appeared in the trees behind us. At first, all I could see was his glowing purple eyes. No need to run away. Why don't you come with me, little ones? I'll take you to Playland. We'll have toys and games and candy. I just know you're going to love it. I knew in my dragon bones I couldn't trust this man. He creeped me out just standing near him. So me and the skeleton horse ran away as fast as we could. You can run, little ones, but I'll take you all to Playland soon. We took refuge in a nearby cave to wait out the rest of the night, worried Mr. Dark might find us at any moment. What's your name, skeleton horse? Sally. I'm Sally the Skeleton Horse. Thanks for the save, Sally. On day two, Sally the Skeleton Horse and I emerged from the cave with the sun shining high up above. We're safer during the daytime. I've only ever seen Mr. Dark under the moonlight. We decided, with a little less pressure on us, to start exploring the rest of the forest. It definitely wasn't so scary with the sun shining in through the trees. Maybe we should collect some apples. That's a good idea, Zozo. A skeleton horse is still a horse, and I love apples. We happily collected apples, until a huge shape came lumbering out of the dark. It was a skeleton dragon, a huge adult skeleton dragon with black bones. Oh wow, hey Mr. Skeleton Dragon, I'm Zozo, and I'm one of your kind. The adult skeleton dragon seemed relieved to see me. Oh, thank goodness, I've been looking for you everywhere. I'm in terrible trouble, and I need the help of another skeleton dragon. I just didn't expect you to be so small. I may be small, but I've got a big heart. How can I help you? A friend of mine, the blue skeleton dragon, was taken by something. Some tall, shadowy entity. And I need help in getting him back. That sounds just like Mr. Dark. He terrorized us too. But don't worry, we'll help you get your friend back from Mr. Dark, no matter what. Thank you, Zozo, and friend. For now, I must go. Stay safe. The adult skeleton dragon flew away, leaving me and Sally alone. It was time to work on our first base, so we started breaking down trees and collecting sticks and wood. I was able to build a crafting bench and made my first set of wooden tools and weapons. These would be perfect for my first base. We found a clearing in the forest and started building ourselves a humble wooden shack with one bed and a stable outside. But all the while, Sally looked a little concerned. What's wrong, Sally? That skeleton dragon's friend. We better work hard at getting him back. Mr. Dark only keeps people at Playland for a hundred days. After that, well, you don't want to know. And she was right. I really didn't. On day three, I was wandering through the forest, looking for apples to eat and more supplies that I could use to upgrade my base. Nothing like fresh air and a walk to make a morning happy and healthy. But during my walk, I saw a hulking figure behind the trees, a mutant skeleton. He looked big 
and a little scary. So when he turned around and looked at me, I ran for the hills. Not today, mutant skeleton. I returned to my base, where I felt a lot safer, and started mining into a nearby hill to gather some stone. Then I made my first set of stone tools, a stone sword, and even started building a sturdy stone wall around my base. But as I was building my wall, I was suddenly approached by an angry looking gang of rogue tomatoes. They somehow looked both silly and like they meant business. Don't you laugh at us, bub. Or I'm gonna give you a knuckle sandwich with extra ketchup, you hear? Those were fighting words, so I decided it was time to give my brand new stone sword some action. If it's a tussle you want, it's a tussle you'll get, tomatoes. I fought them all, making short work of them with my stone sword. And after their defeat, one of them dropped a milk bucket. Guess I'll just keep this, in case it comes in handy. That's when I looked up and noticed it was getting dark. I'd need to finish the wall another day. I definitely didn't want to get stuck outside while Mr. Dark was on the prowl. Instead, I went back to my bedroom and got a good night's sleep. On days four and five, I woke up to the sound of Sally the Skeleton Horse entering my room. Hey, Sally, what's up? Zozo, I noticed you brought back a milk bucket last night. You should drink it. Milk contains calcium, and calcium is good for your bones. It's the perfect way for a skeleton dragon to get stronger. That sounded like a great idea. So I chugged the milk and immediately found myself getting stronger. I grew to a big, tougher form with six hearts rather than three. This is more like it. I'm gonna go take a walk in my new form. I'll finish up the wall while you're out. So that's what I did. But this time, I didn't wanna just walk through the forest. I went all the way to the desert so I could feel the heat on my bones. Ah, <sighs> sun and skeletons go together like peanut butter and jelly. I turned and saw a wither skeleton further out into the desert. He seemed to be fishing in a pond. I couldn't believe how many friendly skeletons I was running into these days. I made my way over the small hill to him. Enjoying the sun, fellow skeleton? Wanna come back to my base and hang out with me and my horse friend, Mr. Wither Skeleton? We're putting together a group to help save an innocent skeleton dragon from an evil man. Sounds good to me, brother. Let's boogie. The Wither Skeleton and I traveled back to the base together, and we came back just in time because a big, angry ravager was trying to break down my defensive wall. Uh-oh. Wanna help me run off this nasty customer, Wither Skeleton? Heck yeah, let's do it! With the both of us ready to fight, the Ravager was outmanned. We didn't manage to defeat it, but it did run away. By then, it was already almost nightfall. We needed to get some sleep, in case Mr. Dark came out looking for us. I installed a second bed in my cabin, as well as some more furniture, and invited the Wither Skeleton to come stay with us. Sounds good to me, brother. Sleepover time. On day six through eight, me and the Wither Skeleton went out into the forest and collected some more yummy apples. But that wasn't all we were looking for. We found the same cave that Sally and I had hidden in the first night I arrived here. It's mining time. And then I mined all over that cave. It didn't take me long to find enough iron and coal to smell myself some new weapons and tools. Iron weapons, iron tools, I'm really moving up in the world. After leaving the cave with our loot and returning to the forest, we were suddenly ambushed by the same Ravager, looking for revenge. Be ready to fight, Wither Skeleton. This won't be easy. I was born ready, Zozo. But sadly, he wasn't actually born ready. That Ravager was way stronger than we thought. We fought the Ravager until it was defeated, but the Wither Skeleton was destroyed in the process. Wither Skeleton, no, I'll never forget you. He dropped his hat, which I decided to take with me. He had also dropped a flint and steel, a useful item for lighting fires. On the way back to my base, I encountered a soul vulture hanging out amongst the trees. Hey, Mr. Soul Vulture, wanna come back to my base? I figure us bone brothers should stick together. Hmm, is it cozy? The coziest in all the forest. Well, I can hardly say no to that, can I? The soul vulture came back to my base with me where I built him his own room. I also used some of my excess iron to create an iron golem to guard the base. Now I can sleep a little easier. On days 9 to 10, I was woken up in the middle of the night by something scratching my window. I looked up and saw Mr. Dark, his bright purple eyes staring in through my window. He was so creepy, I could barely stand it. Mr. Dark, how did you get past my guard wall and my iron golem? Mr. Dark gave a creepy little giggle. I can go anywhere I want at any time I want, Zozo. No walls are too high, no trenches are too deep, and no golem is too strong. 
If I wanted to, I could open your door and walk into your bedroom right now. And why don't you? Because where'd be the fun in that? Silly little dragon boy, you'll choose to come to Playland with me. I just know you will, and you'll have a wonderful time. I'll be keeping my eye on you, Zozo. I'll come back when you least expect it, and then you'll be all mine. Then he disappeared, and I couldn't get back to sleep for the rest of the night. On days 11 through 12, still feeling shaken up from my encounter with Mr. Dark the night before, I decided to build some base improvements. I made the wall taller and started digging a trench around the outside of the wall so the only way to get in or out would be the front gate, guarded by my iron golem. This should keep that nasty midnight creep away. After my work was done, Sally the skeleton horse approached me with a suggestion. Zozo, you should train yourself and get stronger by visiting new biomes. How about a trip to the beach? Yeah, I could use a trip to the beach after a week like this. I made my way to the beach with Sally for a mixture of relaxation and hardcore strength training. And it didn't take long for us to need it because a bunch of angry iron chickens started attacking us. We're the iron chicken muggers. And believe us, we can be pretty foul. So you better hand over all your buck buck bucks. Thankfully, with Sally and I working together, we were able to defeat the Iron Chicken Muggers and keep all of our hard-earned money. This kind of thing is exactly why I hate chickens. We kept exploring until we found another skeleton friend, a skeleton deer. So of course, I invited her back to my base. Gee, thanks. I'd love a new place to stay. I've been getting tired of all this sand. The skeleton deer followed us back to the base, where I built her a new section of the stable to sleep in. This is so comfy. Thanks, Zozo. Don't mention it, skeleton deer. And by the way, I saw you fighting the iron chickens. You were good. But if you want to get better, I recommend seeking out the necromancer. He can mentor you to greatness. The necromancer? That sounds like a plan. On days 13 to 15, I left my base and began searching the forest for the necromancer. I'm sick of being afraid and hiding away when the bad guys come. I want to be strong enough to be brave and fight back. But it turned out I was talking to myself a little too loudly because an angry stone monster came running at me through the woods. Uh oh, sorry about the noise. I'm guessing we can't just talk this out. He did not want to talk it out. Instead, he chased me and I ran as fast as I could on my skeleton dragon legs, but he was faster. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. But just as he was about to catch me, something burst out of the tree line as quick as a flash. It was the mutant skeleton I'd run away from earlier. He pulled out his bow and easily defeated the stone monster, really saving my bones. Thank you, mutant skeleton. I'm so sorry for running away earlier. I guess I learned a valuable lesson about judging on appearances. No problem, Zozo. I know I can look a little scary sometimes, but really, I'm out here trying to help. Want to come and stay at my base for a while? I'm putting together a team. I'd love to, but there's too much work to do protecting people out here. Perhaps I'll drop in for a visit sometime, though. Eh? Me and the mutant skeleton went our separate ways, and I continued searching for the fabled necromancer until I saw a gremlin hunt around, looking clearly distressed. What's wrong, little gremlin? I'm in trouble, man. These, like, nasty jungle spiders have been chasing me all day, and I'm worried they're gonna get me. Hmm, stand back, little gremlin. This sounds like a job for Zozo. With my trusty sword, I found that nasty swarm of jungle spiders and took them out before returning to the gremlin. Whoa, Zozo, you're like a real hero. That was awesome. No problem, little gremlin. Say, you know where I might be able to find a necromancer? Oh, the necromancer. You'll find him in the west of here. Keep heading in that direction, and you're sure to meet him. Thank you, Gremlin. That's exactly what I needed to hear. For days 16 to 19, I began my journey west in search of the necromancer, until I heard a terrible crashing noise coming from the distance behind me. It sounded like it was coming from my base. I immediately turned tail and ran all the way back, only to see that my defensive wall had been destroyed, and a dangerous zombie taiga was attacking my base. What are you doing, you meanie? It's nothing personal, kid. Mr. Doc told me to do this. If I don't hurt you, he'll hurt me. That's just the way it is. I turned and saw something awful. He'd already destroyed the skeleton deer and the soul vulture. Sally, the skeleton horse, was my only companion left. That's it. You're going down. 
I pulled out my sword and attacked the zombie Taiga, but it seemed like he deflected the hits without any effort. He was almost unstoppable. That was just embarrassing. If you couldn't defeat me, you'll have no hope against Mr. Dark. I'm out of here. And with that, the zombie Taiga fled, leaving me in the ruins of my base with two of my friends. Gone! I feel useless, like I can't protect anyone. That's when a gang of mossy skeletons turned up. They looked frightened and said they'd heard I'd been offering other skeletons a place to stay. Of course you can stay here, new buddies, but I'm gonna need to make a few renovations first. I built a new barracks on the side of my base for the mossy skeletons to live in. They seemed quite happy with their new place, and I took the time to rebuild some of the defenses that the zombie taiga destroyed. But I can't just defend my base. I need to be able to defend myself too. I mined for more iron and coal until I had everything I needed to smelt myself a new set of iron armor. I may have lost a battle, but I wouldn't lose the war. On days 20 to 22, I left my base to search for some statue building materials. After all, a cool statue is great for inspiring everyone to do their best. But on my way out to mine some stone, I was ambushed by a green troll with an axe to grind. Well, more specifically, he had a giant fist. I've got no interest in feeding any trolls today. With my sword at the ready, we engaged in a tense duel. Thankfully, with my new iron armor, I was able to withstand his attacks and defeat him. Iron and bone beats flesh. Afterwards, I traveled further through the forest until I stumbled upon a desert with the remains of a giant skeleton. Whoa, this is perfect for building a cool statue, and I know exactly what I'll make with them. I started mining the ribs one by one, making sure I didn't fall into the pools of lava. By the end of it, I had all the bone blocks I'd ever need. On the way back, I encountered a herd of wild sheep grazing and decided I'd tame them and lead them back to the base, because you never know when some wool will come in handy. When we reached the base, I made a new, fenced-off section where the sheep could graze and be left to their own devices. And with that out of the way, it was time to start statue building. Laying down the base is one of the most important parts, so the statue doesn't just tumble over. Can you guess what the statue is going to be yet? Let me know down in the comments. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the forest to search for the necromancer. I needed his teachings to help me get stronger and defeat Mr. Dark. While wandering through the woods, I got attacked by a nasty gang of rotten rats. They tried to bite me and give me some nasty diseases. When it comes to rats versus skeleton dragons, rats don't win. I defeated the last of them with my iron sword and continued searching. On the way, I ran into a wither skeleton jockey riding a spider. He reminded me of the wither skeleton who used to be my friend. Hey, Mr. Wither Skeleton Jockey, wanna come back and stay at my base? Nice offer, but no thanks. There are some evil things lurking in these woods, and I've learned not to trust anyone. Maybe some other time. All right, suit yourself. Stay safe out there. It felt like the day had been a total waste as I journeyed further into the forest. But just as I was ready to give up, I saw the necromancer himself sitting on a rock and meditating. No way, the necromancer, is it really you? Those who seek me will find me, little skeleton dragon. And I assume you've been seeking me. I have. I want you to mentor me and help me become more powerful. Well, young dragon, with great power comes great. Well, you have to have a good reason to have great power. So, what is your reason? I don't need it for myself. I need it to defeat Mr. Dark and save everyone he's captured. That, little dragon, is a good reason. Your training begins now. For days 27 to 31, the necromancer gave me my first challenge. To defeat an entity as evil and spooky as Mr. Dark, you need to learn to conquer your fear. It's okay to be afraid, Zozo, but true courage is knowing that there are some things you must do, even if they make you feel afraid. What would you have me do, Master Necromancer? Do you see that nearby cave? It contains a monster. I want you to go in there and defeat it to help gain control of your fear. If you complete this first challenge, I'll give you a reward. I believe in myself. I can do it. Good. And you can take this bat to help you. It will freeze your opponents for three seconds. May it come in handy. I took the necromancer's bat and went into the cave. It was dark and scary, and I could feel myself getting nervous. But I took deep breaths and kept going. I needed to strengthen my courage to defeat Mr. Dark. 
The deeper parts of the cave weren't any better, only some lichen and mushrooms giving off faint light. Suddenly, a scary, growling soul eater leaped out of the darkness toward me, ready to attack. I stayed calm and hit the creature with my bat, studying it. I'd pass the test. Okay, now it's time to get out of here. On days 32 to 35, my new mentor rewarded me for passing the first challenge by giving me a potion of strength. I immediately drank it and felt myself getting bigger and tougher. This training was really paying off. I have to be at least twice the size I once was. This whole thing made me feel so happy, I decided I'd go back to my base and tell the mossy skeletons and Sally the skeleton horse about my victory. And on the way, I encountered the wither skeleton jockey that I'd met a few days before. Hey, jockey, have you had any second thoughts about coming to my base? Well, now that you mention it, I have been getting some eerie vibes lately. Maybe we should stick together after all. But those eerie vibes didn't come from nothing. Neither of us noticed it, but the day had gotten away from us. The sun was going down and the night was upon us. That's when Mr. Dark himself came creeping out of the trees. Ooh, new friends, I'll take you to Playland with me. We'll have so much fun. He grabbed the wither skeleton jockey with his long spindly arms. Zozo, help me, I'm being kidnapped. But I couldn't help him. Mr. Dark was too fast and too strong, and all I could do was run. My base may have been the only place that was safe at night. On the way back, I encountered an ancient spirit villager who started chasing me, and I was too afraid to even fight him. I just ran away. All that training, useless. I don't know if I'll ever be able to defeat Mr. Dark. On days 36 to 39, I woke up and took the jockey spider to the stable when I heard noise coming from my front gate. I made my way over to see a familiar face waiting outside of my base. It was the same zombie taiga who attacked my base and destroyed soul vulture and skeleton deer. This time, he's going down. I ran out ready to fight. This time, I had full iron armor so the zombie taiga's attacks weren't nearly as strong. What sorcery is this? Mr. Dark told me you'd be easy to defeat. This isn't fair! With the help of my new strength and the bat that the necromancer had given me, I defeated the zombie taiga and avenged my fallen friends! Speaking of friends, Sally the skeleton horse approached me with a wonderful idea. Zozo, we should make our way to the stone shores. I've heard that some of the friendlies over there have created some awesome upgrades. Oh really? Then there's no time to waste. We hightailed it over to the stone shores where we saw an innocent skeleton being hassled by an ogre. We couldn't let that stand. Get away from that skelly. Sally and I charged in, and that was enough to scare the ogre away. He seemed thankful and gave us two rewards, the knockback upgrade, which increased the power of my weapons, and a treasure map. You hear that, Sally? We can use this to search for buried treasure. Now that sounds like a cool adventure to me, Zozo. Let's do it. For days 40 to 43, Sally and I followed the map until we arrived in the warm, dusty badlands. We were getting a little nervous because it was almost nightfall. We were right about that, but we didn't consider that Mr. Dark might send his minions to do the job for him. Look out, Zozo! Some night apparitions are coming straight towards us! Sally was right! Three big, scary night apparitions, I pulled out my sword, now with increased knockback, and fought them off. They were tough, but luckily, Sally and I made a good team, and we were able to defeat two of the three. The last one escaped to fight another day. Let's keep going, Sally! According to this map, we're really close to finding the buried treasure. Soon enough, we found an area of the ground with a big red X marked on it. Don't they always say X marks the spot, Zozo? Let's start digging. We mined down into the ground until we found a buried chest. And inside, there were a whole bunch of rubies. This is awesome. I know exactly what I'm going to use them for. On days 44 to 49, I continued my work on the statue. It was really coming along now. Can you see what I'm making now? I bet you can't guess. But while I was working on my statue, I saw a trader on a horse making his way through the forest near my base and decided to strike up a conversation. Hey, Mr. Trader, got anything cool on offer? It's your lucky day, dear customer, because I'm actually doing a two-for-one special on netherite ingots today. It's a rare and very valuable material. Perfect for a skeleton dragon like you. That sounds so cool. How much? I only take payment in emeralds. But don't worry. If you haven't got any, you can always raid the emerald mines of Alonia near here. They got abandoned by the workers when the boss decided not to pay them enough. So all the emeralds were left for the taking. 
I really wanted those netherite ingots, even though I didn't really know what I'd use them for. So I journeyed to the mines and collected as many emeralds as I could from underground. Netherite city? Here I come! I traveled back to my base and made the trade. The trader gave me my two netherite ingots and rode off. Pleasure doing business with you, Zozo. But I didn't have long to enjoy my fancy new ingots. As night fell, the third and final night apparition came back for revenge, and I needed to run out beyond the wall to take it on. You guys don't know when to quit, do you? Soon enough, I defeated the night apparition, but it made me realize that my base needed better defenses. If these monsters and Mr. Dark mainly come out at night, maybe they hate the light. Perhaps adding some torches to my wall would help ward them off. On days 50 to 53, I realized something horrible. The night apparition attack had just been a distraction, while someone else had sneaked into the stable and kidnapped Sally the skeleton horse. I ran to my mentor, the necromancer, deep in the forest, and asked him where Mr. Dark's forces may have taken my best friend. Well, Zozo, I hate to tell you this, but it's likely that Mr. Dark's minions will be taking your friend to the Twisted Kingdom he calls Playland. But where can I find that? Even I don't know exactly, but my senses tell me that you should travel to the east. Your answers lay there. There was no time to waste. I didn't want Sally to get trapped in Playland, just like the other skeleton dragon's friend, so I immediately set off to the east, hoping to find her. But on my way, I was suddenly ambushed by a zombie spark ready to fight. But unlucky for him, I was ready to fight too. Nothing is going to stand in the way of me rescuing my friend. The zombie Spartan was tough, but I had the power of friendship on my side. It didn't take me long to strike him to submission with my enchanted sword. In his defeat, the zombie Spartan dropped something, two void worm mandibles. Huh, I already have a void worm eye. I better take them. They might come in handy. On days 54 to 57, having defeated the zombie Spartan, I continued searching for Sally the skeleton horse, and my search soon led me to a deep cave. Suddenly, it felt like everything got much darker around me. I'm never going to let Mr. Dark take you to Playland, Sally. That isn't your choice, Zozo. I turned and saw one of the shadows in the cave moving with bright purple eyes. It was him, Mr. Dark, standing right behind me. Do you want to come to Playland with me now? What did you do with her? I swung my sword and Mr. Dark teleported out of the way, appearing right behind me. She's playing with my friends right now, but later she'll play with me. Do you want to play with us, Zozo? I tried to hit him again, but Mr. Dark was too fast for me. He hit me with one of his long spindly arms and knocked me up against the wall, knocking out half of my hearts in one strike. Hmm, still too weak. We'll play again when you're stronger, Zozo. Mark my words. And then he disappeared, leaving me with nothing. A silver lobo approached me out of the darkness, looking worried, and gave me some apples to replenish my hearts. Thanks, Silver Lobo, you saved my life here. The Lobo told me about a secret room further into the cave where I might find some vital information. I went deeper into the cave, feeling around on the wall until I felt a button and pressed it, opening a secret door. There was blue fire torches on the wall and an old map left on the table with some locations marked. They must be keeping Sally at one of these locations. On days 58 through 62, I decided I needed to become stronger before I could find the location where they were keeping Sally. First, I went to the diamond mine the Silver Lobo told me about and took the old elevator down. I quickly found some diamonds near the entrance and started mining. I then saw what looked like an old abandoned mining camp. A chest inside of it had a book with the unbreakable enchantment. I don't think whoever owned this camp would mind if I used the crafting table to make my gear. I made myself a diamond sword and a diamond chest plate to match. I used the nearby anvil to put the unbreakable enchantment on my chest plate. Now this is one of the most powerful pieces of armor around. After that, I returned to my base to continue work on my statue. It's really coming along nicely now. I even got to use all those rubies that Sally and I collected, but I could use some more materials. I went out into the forest to hunt, but in the process, I found something remarkable, a magical, enchanted halo. I decided to try it on and immediately felt its magic empower me. I got stronger and healthier, going up to 14 hearts. Whoa, talk about a functional headwear. As I continued hunting in the forest, I stumbled upon a spider nest. I saw the same gremlin from before, 
stuck in their webs calling for help. The spiders noticed me and charged towards me. This was the perfect opportunity to test out my new gear, but they were no match for my diamond sword. After I dealt with them, I cut the web holding the gremlin and he fell down. He thanked me for saving him again and ran off into the forest. Next time I take on Mr. Dark, he's in trouble. I went back to my base, feeling a lot more confident, and found that a huge bone serpent was waiting for me. But don't worry, he was friendly. So, you're the skeleton dragon I've been hearing about. I heard something about this friend of yours. A skeleton horse? You want to find her? I recommend you look for an abandoned house on the plains. Finally, a break in the case! You're a lifesaver, Bone Serpent, literally! Want to stay at my base? Well, since you're offering, why not? I built a new room with a pool where the Bone Serpent can stay. But by then, it was already nighttime. Mr. Dark would be on the prowl. I'd go find Sally first thing in the morning. On day 63 through 66, I was preparing to go on a rescue mission for Sally. But before I could leave, my mentor, the Necromancer, arrived to give me a gift. Zozo, I wanted to give you a gift before you went on your quest. Mr. Dark is a mutant Enderman, and this dagger will do extra damage against Enderman. But be warned, it'll be incredibly weak against anything that isn't an Enderman. Thank you, Master Necromancer. These will come in handy. I left my base, passed through the forest, and ventured out onto the plains. This was the exact direction that the Bone Serpent told me to go in. That's when I ran into a group of zombies and decided to test my dagger on them, and it did almost no damage. Wow, Master Necromancer was right. This dagger is useless against things that aren't Endermen. Instead, I pulled out my diamond sword and easily defeated the zombie horde before moving on with my quest. I got distracted again when I saw a villager, dressed like a craftsman standing next to a burning house. He looked like he needed help. Hey, mister, I'm Zozo. Can I give you a hand? Yes, please. My wife is trapped in that burning building, and I'm too old to rescue her myself. Please help me. I ran into the burning building and found the craftsman's wife waiting inside. Thanks to my training from the necromancer, I was able to stay cool under pressure and lay the craftsman's wife safely back out. He was delighted to see her. Thank you, Zozo. I owe you one for this, and I always repay my debts. On day 67 through 70, I arrived at the abandoned house in the plains where I figured they must be holding Sally. This place looks so spooky, but I need to do the right thing, just like my mentor taught me. I carefully entered the house, trying not to be detected. I noticed that there was a broken end portal inside. Huh, that's weird. But I was quickly distracted by the sounds coming from upstairs. I drew my sword and ran upstairs, seeing Sally the skeleton horse locked in one of the rooms. Don't worry, Sally, I'm here to help. Wait, Zozo, it's a trap. Three Endermen suddenly appeared all around me. I tried to fight back, but I wasn't fast enough. They kept teleporting and attacking me back. Little by little, I was backed into the corner. It looked like I was a goner until I saw something on the floor. Is that a potion of fortitude? It was. I quickly grabbed it and drank it, and it made me tough enough to collect my thoughts, remembering the gift from my mentor. I pulled out the dagger and charged in. He was definitely right about its strength against Enderman, because soon enough, all three were defeated, although I barely survived that. I went to free Sally from the locked room. We celebrated for a moment in the room before I let her out and headed towards home. Let's go and rest, Sally. I've missed you. I shared some of my apples with Sally as we walked home, happy to finally be reunited. On day 71 to 74, with Sally's help, I invited more skeleton horses to my base and let them stay in my stable. Though I had to take time to expand the stable so everyone could fit inside. Let me know if it gets too cramped in there. After I'd finished my renovations, I decided to journey down into the diamond mine again and collect more, you guessed it, diamonds. When I returned to my base, I used those diamonds to complete my set of diamond armor and enchant it with the protection enchantment to help improve my chances in an intense fight. When the armor was done, I noticed that I received a letter. Oh, it's the craftsman whose wife I saved from that burning house. He says he wants to meet me in the tavern of a nearby village. That's so exciting. On day 75 to 78, I did as the letter said and traveled to the nearby village. I found the craftsman waiting for me in the village tavern, just like he promised. Good to see you again, Zozo. After what you did, I've been thinking about a way to repair you. And while I'm not a rich man, as a craftsman, I can give you an idea of mine. If you're able to combine two netherite ingots, two void worm mandibles, and one void worm eye, you could create a dimensional carver. 
a special pickaxe that can teleport you between locations. Wait, I have all of those materials. That's incredible. I could build one right now. Thank you, Mr. Craftsman. I made my way over to a nearby crafting bench and made myself a dimensional carver and gave it a practice swing. Boom! I was teleported to the village outskirts with a group of great beasts charging at me. Uh-oh, better get out of here. I swung the dimensional carver again and boom, I was back in my base. Wow, this tool is amazing, though I'll save it for emergencies in the future. On days 79 through 84, I started building a new storage shed for extra supplies in my base. You never know when you'll need the extra storage space. Then, I made a full set of armor for Sally, so she could be better protected when she's wandering through the forest. This is great, Zozo. Thank you. But then, I was running low on materials, especially stone and wood, so I decided to head out into the forest to cut down some trees and mine some more stone. While I was mining and lumberjacking, a passing mage noticed me and approached. Excuse me, young skeleton dragon, but would you happen to be Zozo? That depends. Do you work for Mr. Dark? Well, I used to, and there's something I want to get off my chest. You have to understand, Mr. Dark is pure evil. If ever there was good in him, it's gone now. You cannot reason with him. You cannot talk to him. The only joy he takes is in making others unhappy. So when you're dealing with him, just be careful. He is not to be messed with. And with that, the mage left. Guess that's my daily dose of nightmare fuel. On days 85 to 89, I returned to my base from the forest in the late evening, only to find out that the worst had happened. Mr. Dark was attacking my base with a whole gang of soul eaters. Look, friends, Zozo is back. He's here to join our little playtime. I want nothing to do with you or your deranged games. I just want you to stop bothering everybody. Hmm, yes, we could do that. Or we could play catch, soul eater, throw. One of the soul eaters pulled out a javelin and threw it at me. But then something strange happened. Rather than losing hearts, I started to get bigger and stronger. I'd become an evolved skeleton dragon, reaching my full size and going up 20 hearts. Whoa, I guess all that training is finally paying off. Wanna 1v1 me, Mr. Dark? Why should I have all the fun? My friends want to play with you too. Play with him, Soul Eaters. Mr. Dark vanished again, and the Soul Eaters ran towards me. With my new size and power, it didn't take me long to defeat them, which made me even more frustrated that I couldn't have taken on Mr. Dark there and then. Instead, I had to increase the size of my bedroom. A bigger skeleton dragon needs a bigger place to live. On days 90 to 94, I finally finished my statue. It's a giant cool skull statue showing how we skeletons stuck together and stood against the evil of Mr. Dark and his minions. Did you guess what it was before I just told you? Let me know down in the comments. Once the statue was finally done, I decided I'd give some extra training to my best friend, Sally the Skeleton Horse. We trained together on the base grounds by play fighting until she upgraded and became bigger and stronger. It feels so good to be powerful enough to fend for myself. Thanks, Zozo. I never would have gotten this far without you, Sally. And after training, Sally took me to her brewing station she had set up to make a bunch of healing potions. You never know when these will come in handy. On day 95 to day 97, I met with the necromancer in the forest. He had some more valuable advice for me. Zozo, I've heard of the location of a cabin in these woods, once owned by a person who was researching Mr. Dark. You might be able to find some valuable information there. That definitely seemed like a good lead, so I started searching the woods until I found a run-down old cabin. On the inside, I found a dusty old book inside a chest. Oh, I wonder what secret knowledge is inside. But I didn't have time to read it just yet. Suddenly, the cabin was under attack by a gang of fire elementals who'd come to burn down the cabin. I was lucky to have my diamond armor or I would have been burned up too. Okay, fire elementals, let's go. I took them on with my diamond sword and defeated them one by one, only getting a little burnt in the process. Great, now I can finally read this book. The book was filled with frantic notes, including a part that read, Mr. Dark, that maniac, he calls it Playland, but it's nothing like that. There's only death there. It's the end, nothing but the end. Of course, that explains the broken end portal too. Mr. Dark's Playland is actually the end. On day 98, I prepared the final enchantments for my weapons and armor and met with Sally one last time. She was nice enough to give me some more apples for the trip. 
I'm going to take on Mr. Dark. I discovered that he's hiding in the end. And without an end portal, I can use my dimensional carver to get there. You're not going alone, Zozo. I'm coming with you. But Sally. But nothing. I saved your butt the first time you came here. And you think I'm going to let you wander right into Mr. Dark's base? Alone? We started this together. And we're going to finish it together, too. Well, when you put it like that, I can't exactly say no, can I? But I can say that if you want more exciting adventures like this, you should subscribe to Zozo and find more of our videos by searching ZO ZO on YouTube. I'll really appreciate it. On day 99, Sally and I were ready to take the fight to Mr. Dark and free everyone that was still trapped in Playland. Let's do this, Zozo. Let's make it so the people of this world never have to fear the night again. That's what I'm talking about, Sally. Sally stood close to me, and I used the dimensional carver to teleport us all the way to the end so we could storm Playland together. But as soon as we arrived, we were immediately surrounded by a gang of Endermen. I immediately regret this decision. Yeah, me too. I pulled out my handy dagger, ready to fight off the Endermen, when I realized that they weren't here for me. They surrounded Sally, too fast for me to stop them, and grabbed her. They teleported away, taking Sally with them to who knows where. Sally, no! I knew why they'd done it. They were working for Mr. Dark, and Mr. Dark wanted me to face him alone. On day 100, I walked deeper into the end alone, looking for Mr. Dark. He didn't seem to be anywhere around here. That's when I noticed a cage containing a skeleton dragon just like me. I'd finally found him. Don't worry, fellow draggy. I'll get you out of here. I heard an evil laugh behind me, and Mr. Dark appeared. You've come to play with me at long last. I knew you would in the end, little one. I'm not so little anymore. I pulled out my dagger and turned to attack Mr. Dark, but he teleported out of the way and hit me again. He was even stronger than I remembered. Thankfully, I had a spare potion of healing to take to offset the damage. Play along, Zozo. It's no fun if you don't play. I tried to attack him again, but it was like fighting smoke. Every time I went for him, he teleported out of the way and attacked me back. It felt like all of my training was for nothing against him. You don't play fair, Mr. Dark. That's because it's no fun to play like that. And I'm sorry, Zozo, but you're starting to feel awfully boring to me. I looked behind me and saw that a giant chasm had opened up in the ground behind me. It was so dark down there, I didn't even know if there was a bottom. You'll find more friends down there, Zozo. You'll never want to leave. <laughs> While Mr. Dark was focused on me, I saw a figure charging up behind him. It was Sally, the skeleton horse. And still, Mr. Dark hadn't even noticed her. Any last words before you go into the dark, Zozo? Yeah. Playtime's over! What? Sally the Skeleton Horse charged into Mr. Dark and knocked him into the bottomless pit! He no! screamed and fell, never to be seen again! Can't say I'm gonna miss that creep. Let's save the prisoners and get out of here, Zozo. You know, that sounds good to me. On day one, I spawned in as a lava wither. Wow, I'm so little, and I only have four hearts. I can still hover in the air a bit, though, and can I... Yes, I can throw flaming wither skulls. Wow. Awesome. They don't seem very powerful, though. Hmm. It looked like I was in a town of some sort. All of a sudden, I was attacked by some villagers. One of them threw shears at me. How rude. But I'm keeping the shears. Hey, I know I threw some wither skulls, but I didn't hit anyone. I wasn't doing anything to you. I hurried and flew away, slowly. I wasn't very fast yet. Man, that was mean, but I can't afford to fight right now. I found a little cave and managed to find a corner that seemed safe. Tomorrow, I'll gather some supplies. And with that, I fell asleep. On day two, I woke up feeling refreshed. I better get some supplies so I can build a shelter for myself. I actually liked the cave I was living in, so I decided to stay there. I chopped down some trees, and as I hit them, I saw that the trees were catching on fire. Oh, whoops! Smokey the Bear is going to be so mad at me. I'd have to be careful about what I touched, since it seemed like I was pretty hot. Literally. I had enough wood to make some tools for myself, though. They were simple, but they did the trick. Then I almost made myself a nice little nook in the cave, but the pickaxe broke. I went to craft some stone tools, and while crafting, the crafting table set on fire. Oh man, I'll have to figure out a solution to this. I noticed that my hunger bar was getting a little low, but I didn't really know what withers like to eat. I guess I would have to go out and try a few things. I flew around the forest and found some mushrooms and other berries. I tried them, but it seemed like withers didn't like mushrooms. Blech. Looks like no fungi for this wither. I continued on and saw some animals. Maybe I would like some eggs or chicken. Sorry, guys. I ate the raw chicken, but I didn't like that either, and it barely refilled my hunger bar. I explored some more, but it started to get dark, so I decided to head home for the night. I'll try looking for some other food tomorrow. Maybe a nice salad? 
On day three, I went looking around for some plants and grass. I went for the grass, but it only dropped seeds. Then I had the idea to use the shears on it, and voila, I got some dried grass. I decided to eat some dried grass, and finally it refilled my hunger a decent amount. Weird, but whatever does the trick, I guess. As I was eating, I thought I saw something moving behind a tree. Huh? Hello? I didn't hear anything, so I assumed I was alone. I kept eating my dry grass. I went exploring and realized that I was on an island. The water was so clear and beautiful, I wanted to touch it. I reached out, and it hurt me. Oh, I don't think I like water anymore. I mean, I'm literally made of lava, so it makes sense. I made sure to gather up some grass for later. I flew away from the shore. I decided to explore closer to the center of the island. There were lots of trees and bushes. There seemed to be a mountain in the middle of the island. Wow. Wait, no, huh? it was a volcano. Oh, wow. I flew a little closer to the lower part of the volcano and realized there was some lava inside. Ooh, that feels nice. All of a sudden, some lava spewed up at me, hitting me out of the air. Ouch. I quickly flew away and headed back to my cave for the night. On days four to five, I left the cave to go exploring some more. I realized later that someone was following me. I wasn't sure what it was, but I could see it darting away when I wasn't looking. I decided to hide behind some rocks and then pop out at it. It came around the rock and I scared it. Ah! Ah! It was just a little butterfly. Hey, what are you doing following me? I'm not. Okay, sure. I kept going and waited again for the butterfly to come around the bend of a rock. You are following me. Admit it. Fine, I am. But I need your help. Huh? Me? What can I help with? You need to keep the island from exploding. Uh, what? The butterfly sighed and flew away anxiously. The island has been shaking and there have been small lava explosions. The town wise woman said that the island is going to be destroyed with a huge explosion. It can be prevented by a hero. Me? The town summoned you and you came. But one villager and his family were opposed to the whole thing, and he's the one that attacked you. Rude. Right? Anyway, you're our only hope. Why me? Um, I assume it's because you're made of lava? That would make sense, but I have no idea how to do that. I need to talk to the village wise woman. Agreed. The butterfly, who called herself Vanessa, led the way. On day six to eight, we arrived back at the village. We saw a few people around, but not many. Those are the people who attacked you, Bruce and his son Bobby. Vanessa pointed out some villagers outside with some pitchforks. They were arguing with some of the other villagers. Here, yeah, I know how to get to the wise woman's house. Vanessa led me around the back of some houses when we arrived at a home with a bell hanging outside. Nice. I've been expecting you, young hero. I flipped around to see a wise old woman with a basket of various dry grass on the table next to her. I assume you are hungry. Yes, thank you. She welcomed us in and she made Vanessa some tea. You want to know how to defeat the volcano? <laughs> well, I don't even believe that I can. I'm so small. You can. You just have a few steps to take. She brought out what looked like an orb. I knew that the volcano would erupt someday. The villagers turned to me to help, and I gave them a solution, but some would not listen. They will seek you out to hurt you. They believe you are evil and have ill intent. Huh? Why would they think I'm evil? Some withers are, but that is a choice, young friend. You choose your path. And for the sake of our island, I hope you choose wisely. The orb suddenly started to glow, and I saw a figure inside. It looked like me, but bigger and stronger. Wow. You can gain the ability to control the lava and tame the volcano, but it will take time. You will need to complete tasks in order to become the hero we so desperately need. What do I need to do? Only you will be able to know. The volcano will speak to you. Huh? Speak to me? Interesting. It had gotten late, so the woman invited us to spend the night. On days 9 to 10, Vanessa and I woke up and went outside to collect some food from the old woman. Before we left, the wise woman said that in the vision, she also saw our struggles with setting things on fire. That's when she tossed out a cobblestone crafting table. Just what we need, thanks. Vanessa started to fly away. I need to take care of some things, but you should go see what Bobby, one of the villagers, is doing. I went ahead, and that's when I noticed a villager, who I assumed was Bobby, was outside among the other townsfolk. He looked angry. Then all of a sudden, he jabbed his pitchfork at an innocent villager. Defend them. Where did that voice come from? I decided to listen to it. Hey, leave them alone! I dashed over to help the villager and stop Bobby. Get back, you devil! We don't want you here! Bobby tried to stab at me, but I moved out of the way. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to save the island. Just please stop hurting people. Bobby looked surprised. You're not going to eat us? Ew, gross! I mean, no. Why would I do that? Bobby looked shocked and he lowered his pitchfork. My father has been telling everyone that withers are evil and can never be trusted. They feed on the souls of men. Well, I definitely don't. I just like grass. Bobby seemed confused, but also relieved. He looked at me and nodded. I will follow you, Tiny Wither. I know that I had my doubts, but you seem like you really care about our people and our island. 
And I did. I knew they were just trying to make their way in the world like me. We could all live together in harmony. Just then, Bobby's father, Bruce, ran out of the house with a pitchfork. He ran towards me, but Bobby blocked him. Dad, don't hurt him. He's just trying to help. Get out of the way, boy. You don't know what you're talking about. Then Bruce jabbed his pitchfork at Bobby. Defend them. Hey, leave them alone. I spun towards Bruce, pushing him away. As I did, I threw one of my tiny little flaming wither skulls at him. It wasn't much, but it did a little bit of damage. It also gave him some wither effect. You see? He's an evil creature. He will only cause pain and misery wherever he goes. I am not evil. The only evil here is you. And with that, threw another flaming wither skull. It didn't take Bruce out, but it did bring him down. Stop him. Make sure he doesn't hurt our friend again. Bobby smiled at me and chained Bruce up, took his pitchforks, and took him off to the jail. I'll come for you, Wither. You won't succeed in your evil plan. Bobby came back over as Vanessa flew back as well. Thank you... Zozo. Zozo. Thank you, Zozo. You are a welcome friend. All of a sudden, I felt a power surge through me, and I leveled up into a slightly bigger Wither. I had more hearts, and my flaming Wither Skull seemed more powerful too. Then I heard the ethereal voice again. Well done, Zozo. I looked around, but I didn't see where it came from. Oh, neat. Vanessa flew around me and did a little happy dance? I don't know, but it looked fun. Wow, that was amazing. Thanks. Now let's see what my new Wither Skulls can do. I launched some skulls and saw that they did more damage than before. There was more room to grow, but this was definitely a good start. I felt amazing. I also felt a warmth in my heart. I think the voice I heard was the volcano calling to me. I defended the people, and it was happy. On days 11 to 12, Bobby helped me build a house in the village. Well, it was more like a nice cave in the side of a rock, since I would burn wood if I touched it. We figured that I should stay close. Vanessa flew in and saw that I was making a new home, and informed me that while she was gone before, she had decorated my old cave. Wow. And now that I was building a new place to live, she was sad I wouldn't be using her improvements. I told her not to worry, as I planned on bringing everything she had done in the old base to this new one. She seemed to like that and did her little happy dance. As I made my way to the cave, I noticed some spiders outside of it. They weren't too much of a threat, and I took them out easily. Easy peasy. I ate a bit of grass while looking at the new entrance of the cave, and one of the small spiders jumped up behind me and tried to bite me. I took it out with one hit. I went in and gathered my things, but before I could grab all of them, a huge spider dropped down from the ceiling. Aw, oh, gross! Who are you calling gross, you three-headed freak? Hey, that's not very nice. The spider lunged at me and I dodged around him. I was able to use my fireballs, but he kept getting hits in. I didn't think I could defeat him, but I managed to take him down. Phew, that was close. I guess I wasn't as strong as I thought. I still had a long ways to go before confronting the volcano. I gathered the rest of my things and headed back to the village. On days 13 to 15, I made my way back to my new cave. On the way, I noticed a small alcove and decided to mine out some materials. I found some cobblestone, iron, clay, blackstone, diorite, and of course, some flowers. Perfect, I can make these into better tools and armor. I can also use them to upgrade my base. I made my way back to the village with my new materials, excited about what I had found. When I got back, some of the houses were on fire. Vanessa flew up to me. Zozo, the volcano erupted. It was just a small one, but some fireballs fell down from the sky and burned up some houses. I looked around and knew I needed to help. Bobby threw an empty bucket at me, and I hurried to the ocean to help take out the fire with the water bucket. Since I wasn't touching the water directly, I was fine and didn't get hurt. I asked Bobby to come with me, and we mined out some more stone. We needed to fireproof the houses, just in case. We helped the villagers make some improvements to their homes so they wouldn't catch fire again. It was hard work, but we all felt a little safer afterwards. Except I didn't get why the volcano was telling me to do things and then attacking people. There had to be some sort of explanation. While I thought about that, I decided to finish up my cave home by adding all of the things I had gotten from my old base. I also used some of the materials I had mined earlier. And last of all, I smelted down the iron so that I could craft some better tools and armor. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to the voice again. Be strong for them. I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I needed to find out. I went to the wise woman again and told her that the volcano had spoken to me. I also told her I didn't understand why it would attack the villagers. To answer that question, you must talk to Bruce. Huh? Bruce? The guy that tried to hurt me? Precisely. I didn't understand why, but I'm sure I would figure it out. Subscribe. Subscribe? Well, I guess if the volcano said it, then it's pretty important. I made my way out of the house into the jail cell where Bruce was being kept. I need to talk to you, Bruce. Never. <laughs> he spit at me. Why do you hate me so much? He ignored me. I guess I could try again later. I headed out and went to find Bobby and Vanessa. I told them all about the volcano speaking to me and about Bruce. Bobby didn't seem surprised. My dad doesn't really talk that much. It would take a miracle to find out what he knows. Great. Off to a strong start. I got back to my cave and made some better upgrades to my house. I even built Vanessa a little nook to stay in. She seemed to really like it. Thanks, Zezo. You're awesome. She really did know how to put a smile on my faces.
On days 20 to 22, I woke up with that same voice in my head. Be strong for them. Huh? Can you at least tell me how? Silence. Great. I got up and decided to go out to the beachfront to look for some things and gather supplies. It was beautiful, but I had learned my lesson about water. Just then, a huge crab came out and tried to snatch me. Luckily, I was made of lava and I burnt him. Ouch, that's rude. I wanted to eat you. Trust me, you don't want to eat me. The crab looked at me, confused. You're not a shrimp with three heads? No, I'm a lava wither. Zozo, to be exact. A lava wither? Haven't seen one of those since the last one was summoned. Wait, there was another one? Huh? When? The crab clicked his claws for a minute and thought. Probably like 40 years ago. Something like that. That was a small thing then. This was new information. Thanks, you've been a big help. I would say thanks to you, but you're not a shrimp, so I'm even hungrier. And with that, the crab skittered away. What a weird guy. We had almost forgotten why we came to the beach, but then remembered and picked up some more sand. On days 23 to 26, I headed back to the village and started smelting the sand. Vanessa and Bobby came to say good morning. I told Bobby and Vanessa about what I learned from the crab. Another wither was summoned? I wonder why nobody ever mentioned it. Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. I decided to talk to the wise woman again. She would have been around then, so she must know something. I confronted her and she sighed. I had hoped that Bruce would have told you, but I suppose I must. She grabbed her orb again and I saw images flash across it. About 40 years ago, two young men in the village decided to play with magic. They had read about withers and decided that they wanted to summon one. They grabbed the items required from a weird magical room. They went about it correctly, but there are always risks. Once the wither was summoned, using magma blocks and wither skulls, it befriended the two young men. They kept it secret for a long time, but the wither wanted to be free. The boys promised that they would let him go, but they never did. The wither grew bitter and despised humans, especially the ones who had summoned him. One day, he managed to break free from its bonds. There was an argument between the three, but the wither had had enough. He attacked the village and the two young men. Let me guess. Bruce was one of those young men. The other died trying to save Bruce's life. His name was Marcus. So what happened to the wither? It laid the village to ruins, destroying most, and then escaped, taking captivity in the volcano. It grew over time and now inhabits it. It seeks revenge on all humans, but it's been biding its time. So it's not the volcano that is attacking people. It's the wither living inside. The old woman nodded. But the spirit of the volcano has been battling with it for many years. It has grown weak, nearly on the brink of collapse. That is why we need you, Zozo. You must restore the volcano and defeat the wither corrupting it. That was a lot to process. This wither had been growing for over 40 years. How could a small wither like me stand against something so powerful? On days 27 to 31, I woke up and knew where I needed to go. I went to Bruce and told him what I had learned. He looked tired today, not as angry. I know what I did was wrong. I messed with power that I had no right to use. I wanted something special, and I treated it like garbage. It's all my fault that this is happening, but I can't fix it. He seemed so sad, but I knew what I needed to say. That's why I'm here. I will protect you. All of you. Bruce looked at me and he smiled. I owe you my life, Zozo. Thank you. I unlocked the gate and let Bruce out of the jail. He couldn't embrace me, so he bowed a little bit instead. I will follow you, little wither. You are our strength. Just then, I felt another surge of power, and I leveled up into a bigger wither. I was now adult size. I felt that calm again, and then I heard the voice. Well done, Zizu. I was on the right path. Now, I just needed to prepare. On days 32 to 35, I tested out my new abilities. I could shoot bigger fireballs and could even fly faster. Bobby heard the explosion and came to take a look at what was happening. He was impressed. Bobby gave some materials and helped to set up an obstacle course with some targets to train with. We had to keep some water on hand though, so I wouldn't burn up all the trees. Careful, Zozo. I'm trying. I just have no idea what to expect. I'll be fighting another wither, and I'm not even sure what tricks he has up his sleeve. Just then, I saw Bruce. He came over and decided to help me out too. He showed me how to do the crawling exercise. I was too big for it, so I just flew over the obstacle. Bruce was not impressed. He then showed me how to aim my shots with some target practice. I think I'm getting the hang of it. I had hit the target, but Bruce suddenly drew his bow at me. He started shooting, and I successfully dodged some arrows, but some hit me. When he stopped, he told me he was trying to teach me how to dodge. You could have given me a heads up first, but hey, thanks for your help. No problem, Zozo. Anything for you. Anything? Um, within reason. Good to know. He smiled, and we all headed back to the village for some food. When we got there, there was a commotion at the center square. What's going on? A small eruption came up out of the ground and swallowed a house. 
We looked, and indeed, there was a large spot where the house should have been. Instead, there was a pool of lava. Was anyone inside? No, thank goodness, but it's not safe here. The villagers all argued until Bruce hushed them. We will take care of this. We will fortify the village and take precautions. The villagers seemed a little at ease, but still scared. I was going to give it my all to protect these people. I just needed to know what to do next. On days 36 to 39, I waited for the voice of the volcano to guide me. There wasn't anything, and I felt a little bit frustrated. Why aren't you talking to me? Nothing. I decided that I would just wait, patiently, or at least try to. Bruce and I helped to further fortify the village. He threw us some materials, and we made some cobblestone walls. As we were doing so, Bruce brought up another idea. Hey, Zozo, we want to build a statue in your honor. Also, as a reminder of hope, do you have anything in mind? I thought for a minute and then told Bruce what I would like. He smiled. That sounds perfect. We gathered the needed supplies and started to clear a spot for the statue. We built part of the base and hoped to get it all done in a few days. Can you tell what it is? On days 40 to 43, we went out to explore the island. I guess I had some other things I needed to do before the volcano would speak to me again. We went looking around the volcano when something caught my eye. It was a large cave. I went in and saw that there were some diamonds. I quickly mined them all up along with some other materials. With this, I can make some diamond armor. Neat! I noticed some lava running through a part of the tunnel and wondered if that's how the houses were being swallowed up. I tried to create some barriers just in case. It felt so nice and warm, I decided to take a break and enjoy the lava. Just then, I felt something grab me from behind. I managed to squirm around and saw a giant squid was dragging me into the water. I wasn't burning him because his tentacles were wet, so I was helpless. Oh no! He swam into the water, pulling me with him. When I touched the water, I solidified and was basically useless. I tried to gargle to make him stop, but he kept swimming further and further down. I saw my hearts dropping and thought this was the end. Just then, the squid released me into an alcove. Out of the water, I transformed back into a lava wither. My warm heart was enough to melt the stone back into lava. Hey, there you go, friend. I have saved you. Huh? Saved me? You almost destroyed me. The squid looked confused. Wait, you're not Lily. No, who's Lily? My daughter. Huh? I looked around and saw some axolotls coming up to me. That's not her, Paul. You need to stop snatching people. I looked at the axolotl and she looked at me. There was absolutely no resemblance. Sorry about Paul. He is Lily's friend and she disappeared a few days ago. We think she might have been kidnapped by the other clan of axolotls. They live nearby, but their keep is protected by a shark. Well, it sounds like you need help. I'll go look for her and bring her back to you. Really? Wow, that is so kind of you. Here, you will probably need this. The axolotl gave me a diving suit. I guess that solved the problem of me not being able to go into the water. Off onto another adventure. On days 44 to 49, Paul guided us close to the rival axolotl clan. He suddenly stopped and told us he saw the blue axolotl somewhere around here one time, but not sure exactly where. We thanked him anyway. I was close to the surface and took a look to see where I was. I recognized the area. I was next to the dry grass field. This was a great opportunity to use the diamonds I got, so I crafted a diamond sword, pickaxe, and shovel. That's when the crafting table caught on fire. Ah, not this again. The bench broke before we could craft all of the diamonds. Darn it. Well, at least I got some tools. Better than nothing, I guess. That's when I noticed a nice looking lagoon. Inside of it, I spotted a cave. It seemed empty, so I made my way underwater to take a look. Inside the cave, I thought I could see the axolotls hiding in there. Just then, I was attacked by a shark. Hey, I'm just trying to save Lily. The shark didn't respond. He kept attacking me. Luckily, I had crafted a new sword, so I was able to take him out pretty quickly. I swam up to the cave and emerged from the water onto a dry area. The axolotls looked terrified of me. I just want to take Lily back home. One larger blue axolotl moved forward. Lily is where she belongs. She loves me and wants to stay here. Huh? I didn't see Lily anywhere, so I really didn't trust this guy. Then I heard a voice. Help! I'm in here! That must have been Lily. Her own choice, huh? The blue axolotl jumped at me and attacked. The other axolotls backed away, clearly frightened. I was able to take down the leader quickly, and the other axolotls thanked me. Thank you, stranger. We've been captive to Blake for far too long. He wouldn't let us out and he kidnapped Lily as a way to start a war with the pink axolotls. Why? He was obsessed with Lily for months and wanted to marry her, but she said no. Then a few days ago, he captured her. Well, you're all safe now. I went around the corner and found Lily trapped in a cave. I freed her and we all left the lagoon. I knew what I had to do. On days 50 to 53, I went back to the alcove of the pink axolotls with the blue axolotls and explained the situation. They made a truce and Lily's mom was more than happy to have her daughter home. We owe you a great debt, Zozo. Take this as a token of our gratitude. 
Then Lily's mom gave me a huge stash of diamonds. Wow. wow, thank you. Of course. If what I heard is true, you are embarking on a great quest to save our island. You will need it more than we do. I thanked them again and then started the long journey back home. On days 54 to 57, I heard the voice of the volcano speak to me. Sacrifice for them. Sacrifice? Huh? I could do that. I just needed to figure out how. I quickly made myself an armor stand and hung my diving suit up. As I got to town, I noticed that the wise woman was outside looking at the sky. Huh? Welcome back, Zozo. You have been gone for a long while. I got mistaken for an axolotl and ended up saving the kidnapped daughter and joining the clans together. Hmm, yes, as I expected. I looked at her. She was still looking at the sky. She was an odd one, she was. Another two houses have collapsed while you've been gone. We did our best, but the wither grows angry. He is nearly on the brink of taking over the volcano. I was really worried. Maybe the villagers could leave the island and find refuge somewhere else. I suggested it to the wise woman. We don't run away from our problems, Sozo. Not run away, just stay somewhere else. We are safer here with you. Huh? I turned and saw Bruce and Bobby approaching me. Are you sure? Yes, young friend. All will be well soon enough. We all looked at the sky together for a minute. Then Bobby leaned over and whispered to me. What are we looking at? We slowly backed away as the wise woman continued to look at the sky. We went and gathered some more supplies so we could continue to work on the statue. It was basically done, we just needed a few finishing touches. We also built some new houses and made sure that the foundations were solid. We also built them over the water in hopes that the other wither would be less likely to attack them. The wither would try to take us down, but we would prevail. On days 58 to 62, I woke up to Vanessa flying around nervously. What's wrong, Vanessa? I think there's a storm coming, Zozo. Look! I looked outside and sure enough, it started to rain. I guess I could try to walk around in my diving suit, but it would definitely make me slower. I don't think I should go outside. I can't either. One raindrop could really hurt me badly. I hadn't thought about that, but it made sense that Vanessa was pretty fragile. Her wings were paper thin. It's okay though, we can have a day in. We can play a game. Vanessa flew around me excitedly. We ended up playing some games and she shared stories of her family. Where are they now? I'm not sure exactly. They all migrated when I was still little. My wing was hurt, so I couldn't go with them. That made me really sad. So they abandoned you? Vanessa landed. Her wings drooped a little bit. It's okay, Vanessa. I won't abandon you. I promise. Her wings lifted a little bit, and she fluttered around again. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. Sacrifice for them. I sighed. I'm trying. Bobby and Bruce eventually came over looking for us. We explained the situation and they helped build a little overhang so we could travel to and from the village safely. I was really grateful and made some food for everyone. A little while later, I took the diamonds I had been given and made myself some nicer armor. Wow, this stuff was amazing. I could take on anything with this. On day 63 to 66, I went out to go test my new armor. I went out to the jungle area where I hadn't been before. Maybe I could find some more food items. I was getting a little bit low on dried grass and only had five peas left. Vanessa had told me about something called chocolate, and it didn't sound half bad. I would go looking for some cocoa beans. I was foraging through the trees when I entered a clearing. It looked like there was something written in the ground. Huh? It was that thing that the volcano had said to me. Be sure to listen to that little voice in your head telling you to subscribe. I started gathering some dried grass, when all of a sudden I heard some loud screaming. I didn't see anyone around me, but then I realized it was coming from the sky. The volcano was spewing fireballs. I hurried and dodged around them, but one hit me. It was small, but it was enough to knock me over. Apparently, these fireballs are extremely hot since they set me on fire. What is this magic? Huh? I'm not supposed to burn. Another fireball hit me. <laughs> Ouch, stop that. What's the matter? Can't take a little heat? I looked around, but didn't see anyone. It sounded like the voice of the volcano, but much harsher. Hello? Small little wither, you are nothing, but I can make you great. I assumed it was the wither inhabiting the volcano. I'm not listening to you. Why not? We are, after all, brothers. I'm not your brother. You are a bully, preying on the innocent. Innocent? They captured me. They kept me as a pet. I knew I was destined for more. I had my revenge with the power I possessed, but I am so much more now. The time will come when I obtain all the power of the volcano, and then I will truly have my revenge. What they did was wrong, but they're sorry. You don't need to blow up the entire island because you're mad. The voice screamed and fireballs rained down around me. I tried to dodge, but I couldn't handle all of it. A fireball hit me and everything went black. On days 67 to 70, I woke up in darkness. After a minute, my body lit up the space and I realized I was buried. Uh -oh. oh great, now I have to dig my way out. I started using my tools to chip away at the hardened lava. 
It took a few minutes, but I was finally able to free myself. The clearing I had been in was now just a large pool of lava. Good thing I was made of the stuff, otherwise I would have been trapped. I flew over the hot magma and started to make my way back to the village. If the wither had thrown this big of a tantrum here, I'm sure he did some damage to the village. When I arrived, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I realized the wither must have used up all his strength trying to hurt me. I was relieved. Just then, I saw Bobby running up to meet me. Zozo, come quick! Huh? I followed after him into his house. What's wrong? It's my dad. I can't find him anywhere. I thought for a minute, then something dawned on me. He must have gone to talk with the wither in the volcano. That's the only thing I can think of. Bobby looked sick to his stomach. He doesn't need to do that. He probably feels responsible, but don't worry, Bobby. I'll go find him. I hurried and flew back to my cave to gather some supplies. On my way out, I noticed Bobby was waiting for me with a pack on his back. I'm coming with you. It's too dangerous, Bobby. It's my dad. I have to do something. He was right. I wouldn't want to stay behind either. He will probably go back to where it all started, on the desolate side of the island. Then that's where we'll go. On day 71 to 74, we went tromping through the island slowly. Bobby couldn't fly like me, but I wanted to keep a low profile anyways. We mostly traveled in the jungle and gathered food as we went. Hey, more cocoa beans! I totally forgot to make chocolate when I was in the village. I'll have to do that when I get back. Sacrifice for them. Huh? Sacrifice what? The cocoa beans? I think the volcano was losing it. We kept traveling and came upon a small pond. We made a small shelter and decided to stay there for the night. Bobby couldn't really sleep because he was so worried about his dad. It's okay, Bobby. We'll find him. I sure hope so. It was quiet for a while, but then out of nowhere came some more spiders. Ah, oh, gross! Bobby helped me fight them off, and in no time they were all gone. Now I really won't be able to sleep. I'll keep watch. Don't worry. Bobby nodded and then managed to eventually fall asleep. I hoped I could keep my promise to him. He really needed his dad, and I didn't want to see him lose him. On day 75 to 78, we kept trekking through the jungle. I could tell that Bobby was really tired, but he kept pushing through. We came to a large cliffside and realized that we needed to climb up it. We started to ascend, but then the island started to shake. Zozo! The island kept shaking, and then suddenly the cliffside split. Bobby fell halfway into the cliff and managed to hold onto a ledge. I looked down and noticed Bobby was barely holding on. I went to grab him, but remembered I would burn him. Uh -oh. Zozo, move! I maneuvered around them and managed to get to the ledge. Then I mined some blocks and created a safe path for Bobby to get back to safety. Wow, that was intense! You're telling me. We waited for a minute, just in case there was another earthquake. I hope the villagers are okay. I'm sure it's fine. I wasn't too sure, but I had to be hopeful. I need a break and some water. I nodded and let him rest for a bit. We decided to make camp and I made a small shelter. We set up a fire and Bobby was able to fall asleep right away. Having a near-death experience will do that to you. On day 79 to 84, we trekked further down the side of the volcano. We finally made it to the bottom and just as expected, there was a barren wasteland. Everything was dried up and dusty. Bobby looked around in awe. This is... Empty? Sad. I nodded in agreement. So much destruction and pain. It needed to be healed and restored to the way it once was. We started to make our way through, but then Bobby was attacked by some snakes. Ouch! He stabbed them with his pitchfork, but more were getting bites in. Hey, stop it! I threw fireballs at them and managed to take them out, but Bobby looked pretty bad. You okay, buddy? I think I've been poisoned. I need some medicine. It's in my bag. He managed to grab some and take it. The wilderness is not kind to you, my friend. Bobby laughed. No, it is not. After this, I'm never leaving home again. His laugh got quiet. I wonder how my dad is doing with all of this. You're weak. I'll go get you some food. Where? I looked around. Touché. Instead, I located a large dead branch and severed part of it off. I gave it to Bobby to use as a crutch. Thanks. We slowly but surely made our way further into the wasteland. On days 85 to 89, Bobby and I arrived at what looked like the remnants of the village. Some of the stones were still there, but there wasn't much. This must be it. My dad has got to be close by. Bobby threw down his crutch and went scrambling around the ruins. I went looking around, but didn't see much. Then I noticed something shining across the land. Huh? I flew toward it and saw a metal-looking container buried in the ground. I unearthed it and discovered it was a cage. Bobby came up beside me. Is that... It's where I kept it. Huh? We both flipped around to see Bruce emerging from a small hole in the ground. It was partially hidden by a rock, which is why we didn't notice it in the first place. Bruce approached us and touched the side of the cage. It's where I kept Aiden, the other wither. Bruce seemed really upset and he started to cry. I've made so many mistakes. All of this is my fault. I need to fix what I broke. 
Not like this, Dad. Don't sacrifice yourself. You only give him what he wants. Bruce didn't say much else, but we followed him into a small cave. We stayed there for a while to rest up while I devised a plan. On days 90 to 94, I woke up to Bobby yelling at Bruce. Huh? It's not your responsibility. Yes, it is. Don't try to stop me, Bobby. I'm doing this for you. For all of you. What about Zozo? He promised he would help us, and he will. I can't let someone innocent pay for my mistakes. Not anymore. Sacrifice for them. I knew what I needed to do. Bruce went back to his room in a huff, and I came up to Bobby. I know what I have to do. Just promise that you won't follow me, and make sure your dad stays here. Is this goodbye, Zozo? No, I'll be back. Don't you worry. Bobby nodded and then went up to the opening of his dad's room. We lured Bruce towards the cage, telling him that we found something interesting in there. When Bruce wasn't looking, we pulled him inside the cage and locked the door. He looked stunned. This is for your own good, Bruce. Don't follow me. He sat there and begged me. Please, Zozo. It's okay, Bruce. It's what I'm supposed to do. On days 95 to 97, I continued flying toward the volcano. It spewed lava here and there, but I dodged past it. When I was a good distance away, I stopped and hovered. Aiden, I've come to talk to you. The voice I heard before let out an ugly scream and spewed more lava at me. You dare to call me with that monster named me? I'm here to take his place, Aiden. I know you hate him, but he needs to live. Take me instead. I saw the lava spew out further, almost hitting me. Why would you sacrifice yourself for such measly humans? Because it's the right thing to do. The voice laughed. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. I moved closer to the volcano to see if I could spot Aiden. Suddenly, the volcano reached out and snatched me, pulling me into its burning embrace. Everything went black. On day 98, I woke up inside the lava. I heard the voice of the volcano. Well done, Zuzu. I felt a powerful surge run through me, and I burst from the ground into the air. I leveled up into a full-sized wither. Wow. But then I felt a different kind of power. Huh? It was much bigger and stronger than me. I realized I could control the volcano. Wow. I focused my energy and forced Aiden to fly out. It was out of the volcano, but the fight wasn't over. He was as big as I was, probably stronger. But what choice did I have? I flew toward him, spewing lava and shooting witherheads. He fired witherheads back at me, but at long last, one of my wither skulls knocked Aiden down. On day 99, I approached Aiden. He looked like a normal wither like me, but he shook with anger. How dare you! That was my home! You have no right to use all that power for evil. This ends here, Aiden. I commanded the lava to burst up and around him and solidify to his body, caging him in. He was stuck, and he knew it. Let me go! I have to make them pay! They're all evil and can't change. They don't deserve to live. You're wrong, Aiden. And with that, I slashed at Aiden and defeated him. Thank you, my friend. You have proven yourself worthy of my power. The volcano spoke to my mind, and I felt a stronger connection with it. Wow. I was now its guardian. If I stayed worthy of it, it felt right. On day 100, I freed Bruce and told him the good news. He followed me and Bobby back to the village, where we all lived happily and safely. The people celebrated, and I finally made some chocolate chip cookies. We also finished the last part of the statue, and it looked awesome. Everything was right on the island, finally. On day one, I spawned as a golden hydra. Whoa, this is amazing. I looked around and noticed that I was in some sort of cave. I ventured out and immediately saw some scary dread knights. There he is. Catch him. No thanks. I scurried away, the men following after me. You come back here. They started shooting darts at me. Ah! One dart hit me, and I lost some hearts. Oh. Wait, I only have five hearts? This is insane. I hurried and tried to get away, but the men were too fast. They surrounded me as I felt my eyes start to close. Perfect. Everything is coming together. And with that, I passed out. On day two, I woke up in a cage. Oh, where am I? I looked around and noticed that there were more cages around me, but most of them were empty. I almost didn't notice the frog sitting in the cage nearby. He blended in with the floor really well. I was waiting for you to wake up. Come on, we gotta get out of here. But how? Even if we can get out of the cages, I don't know how to get out of the prison. I know a way out, but you need to be the one to unlock the door. I looked closer and examined the gate. I began to hit it with my heads, but that started to make me feel dizzy. The frog laughed at me. Oh, no, no, use your fire spit. 
fire spit. I did what the frog said, and I spit at the lock. But it wasn't fire, it was golden little orbs. I left the cage and started firing away at the frog's cage until it opened too. Thanks. Don't mention it. I'm Zozo, by the way. I'm Freddy. Freddy and I made our way over to the exit and broke through the door, up the stairs. We were home free. On day three, Freddy and I hurried as fast as we could away from the underground prison. While we were running, I spotted some pigs and chickens and hurried to gather their meat before they could scamper away. I gathered up their meat and shared some with Freddy. We both chowed down. Thanks, Zozo. And I gotta say, that prison break was amazing. I didn't know you could spit gold. Neither did I. In fact, I didn't know much about anything except that some evil guys were after me. Freddy and I agreed to go our separate ways. I went further into the forest to explore. Maybe I would find some other hydras. Little hydra. Huh? I turned and saw an old troll walking slowly up behind me. He looked hurt. Would you mind helping me? I was attacked and need to get back home before it gets dark. Of course. We slowly made our way to his home, a little cottage next to a river. Thank you, little Hydra. Please come inside so that you are safe. There are all kinds of monsters outside. The guy seemed nice enough, so I stayed with him for the night. On days four to five, I woke up in the troll's house. He had cooked some stew for both of us. Thank you. What did you say your name was? I'm Horace, just a poor old troll trying to make his way in the world. Horace seemed better than yesterday, but still very tired. Is there anything I can do to help you? Actually, I'm more concerned for your safety. You are the Golden Hydra after all. The Golden Hydra? A prophecy was given many years ago by a great seer. She said that a Golden Hydra would be born and it would be his destiny to either save or destroy the land. Is that me? I believe it is. What should I do? Build yourself a safe house, gather materials, strengthen yourself as much as you can. You need to be at your best. Horace gave me some stone tools and a full stack of oak planks. Use these to start. I hope to hear from you, little Hydra. Be careful who you trust. I left Horace's house to find a good place to start a base. I found a nearby lake on the plains with some nice level ground. I used my stone tools to gather additional material and started working on a modest Japanese-style gold Hydra base. It may have only been one building for me so far, but there was plenty of room on the plains for this base to expand with more buildings and features. It was all coming together when I heard some men yelling. There's the Hydra! Get him! It was more of those evil Dread Knights! Not today, you goons! I spit my orbs at them, and they all turned to gold! Oh, wow! That is not what I expected! Just then, I felt power rush through me, and I grew into a larger Hydra! Now I have 11 hearts! Nice! I'll beat whoever controls those Dread Knights in no time! On day 6 to 8, I ventured from my base to gather more information. Also, I wanted to see if I could find more creatures that needed shelter from the mysterious villain and his men. I came across some tortoises who immediately tried to run away. Hey, I'm a friend! They looked at me warily. You aren't working with the sorcerer? No, a sorcerer? Is that who's commanding all the Dread Knights? I have nothing to do with him. Look, kid, it would just be better if you left this land. It's not safe for you. The tortoises slipped away, leaving me confused. I decided to go back to Horace's house to ask him about it. A great sorcerer has purged this land and intends to use your power for his purposes. He will stop at nothing to get you. That's awful. What should I do? There is a cave nearby that has some armor and tools that we could use. I was on my way there the other day when I was attacked. That's a good place to start. Sounds like a plan. On days 9 to 10, I hurried to the cave that Horace mentioned and went to explore. Sure enough, there was a chest hidden behind some rocks. Just as I was about to open it, a great hairy spider came rushing out. Ugh, gross! He attacked me, and I was too slow to spit my golden orbs. I took quite a bit of damage. Ouch! I hurried and slithered from the cave. This is too hard. I can't defeat him by myself. Hey, are you trying to get rid of that spider too? A wolf came out from behind a tree. Yeah, I am. Why do you want him gone? He took some of my armor. I'm trying to keep myself safe from the sorcerer's goons. Me too. Maybe we can work together. 
We came up with a plan and went back down to the spider's lair. The wolf distracted him and I shot my golden orbs at him. He turned immediately into a gold statue. Wow! We gathered the materials in the chest and I gave the wolf the reptile armor. Be careful out there. Zozo. Zozo. I'm Lex. Thanks, Lex. Take care of yourself. On days 11 to 12, I returned to Horus. At first, he was happy, but when I told him that I'd given Lex the armor from the chest, he got really mad. The other animals don't matter, little Hydra. What matters is that you're strong. He was acting really weird, but I couldn't blame him. He was probably scared of the sorcerer and just wanted us to be safe. You've done well, but this isn't enough. Now you must travel to the Black Forest and gather more strength potions left there by wizards of yore. This is important, little Hydra. Don't trust anyone besides me. Defeat anyone who stands in your way. I left the house, wondering why Horace didn't want me to trust anyone else. He was probably just paranoid. As I made my way to the Black Forest, I saw some more of the sorcerer's goons traveling along the river. I tried to be quiet and slither away, but they spotted me. It's the Hydra! Grab him! I dodged some of their darts and shot my golden orbs at them. They tried to escape, but after a few shots, they were all statues. Nice! I soon reached the depths of the Black Forest, hoping to gather the potions Horus wanted. On days 13 to 15, I plucked up the courage to enter the sinister Black Forest. At first, there didn't seem to be anyone there, but I kept looking, wanting to find those potions. After just a few moments, I saw a family of hoglins gathered around a campfire, harmlessly warming themselves. Why does Horus want me to defeat these hoglins? They seem really nice. I slithered in and the hoglins were taken aback. I don't mean you any harm, I'm just curious if you have any armor. The hoglins were cautious, but one answered me. Are you going to try to steal it from us like the others? Others? What others? A sorcerer's men. They have tried to steal it before. They want all the armor taken away from the creatures in the land, so they can't fight the sorcerer. What? That didn't seem right. I needed to talk to Horus about this. On days 16 to 19, I traveled back to Horus's house. I arrived, and he seemed happy to see me. But when I told him I couldn't get the strength potions from the Black Forest, he immediately turned angry. Don't you know what's at stake? You needed to get those potions. You need to get stronger. Why is it so important that I'm stronger? You are not fulfilling my expectations. I need to think this through. He told me to leave. I did, more confused than before. When I arrived back at my base, Freddy Frog was there. Hey, buddy, it's been a while. Zozo, I'm so glad you're okay. I heard that you met the sorcerer. How did you survive? What do you mean? I haven't met him. All the creatures have seen him hiding out in the woods. He's disguised as a simple old troll. Wait, was he talking about Horus? I heard he's planning an attack with his goons today. He's going to the village in the plains. I had to see for myself if this was true. It couldn't be Horus, could it? I went with Freddy to the village in the plains like he said. When we got there, I saw the goons being led by a very recognizable troll. I looked closer and realized it was Horus. You manipulated me. Horus turned toward me. Oh, Zozo, you gullible little Hydra. You are too quick to trust, but you've been a hindrance. Time for a change of plans. You had no right to do that to me, and you have no right to steal from innocent creatures and people. I charged at him, spewing golden orbs. He easily outmaneuvered them, and with his powerful swing, threw me back into a building. Before I knew it, I blacked out. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with Freddy looking down at me. Oh good, you're awake. You need to help the villagers. I got up and followed Freddy to the village. Some of the buildings were on fire. Everyone, move away from the buildings. I hurried and spewed my orbs at them, extinguishing the fires. It was definitely not what the villagers were expecting. Whoa, this is amazing. How can we repay you? It might not be safe here anymore. You can all live at my base with me. I have lots of room. The villagers talked amongst themselves for a little while, then readily agreed. We made our way to my base and then gathered some needed supplies for the new houses. It was hard work, but in no time, everyone had a house of their own. Thank you, Zozo. These look amazing. On days 23 to 26, I went back to the cave where I originally spawned. It must have been important, so I figured that I should investigate. I entered the cave and it seemed 
very normal. I was hoping to find some sort of clue as to who my parents were. It had been a crazy couple of days, and even though I had friends, I wondered if I had family. All of a sudden, I heard a noise coming from deeper in the cave. I explored further and saw another Hydra, but she was being attacked by a group of skeletons. Get away from her! I slithered down and started shooting the skeletons. Within just a few moments, those bags of bones were gone. I turned to the Hydra, but then I felt a power surge through me. I grew, and then I leveled up into an adult Hydra. I now have 18 hearts. I let out a large breath of golden fire. So-so? The Hydra looked scared of me. No need to be scared. Who are you? I'm your mother. My mother? Uh, I'm so glad I found you. Where did you go? I laid an egg and went to find some food. But when I came back, you were gone. I was so worried about you. How about you come live with me? I have a base and it'll be much safer than this cave. She happily agreed and we made our way in that direction. On days 27 to 31, as my mother and I left the cave, we happened upon Freddy again. Hey, Zozo, do you think you could help my family? He directed me toward a small alcove nearby that had been broken apart. What happened? The sorcerer's goons tried to break our alcove after we refused to leave. We managed to escape before anyone was hurt, but we don't have a home now. The frogs looked very sad, so I offered to build them a new home on my base. Really? That would be great! Thank you so much! With the frogs and my mother in tow, we continued on our way to my base. Once we arrived, we got straight to work, building a pond for the frogs and placing down a bed for my mother. I also noticed that the villagers had planted crops and gathered some animals. They even made a nice path connecting all the buildings. Thanks, guys! You've done some great work here! It was all starting to come together! I will get that golden hydra if it's the last thing I do. He is the key to all of my plans. What would you like me to do, master? I want you to follow him. Make sure he is met with challenges. He needs to reach maximum strength by the full moon. It's vital that you do this. Yes, master. On days 32 to 35, I wanted to return to the underground prison where Freddy and I were held. If Horace wanted to befriend me, why did he capture me in the first place? That's a good question. Maybe there are some answers at the prison. I asked Freddy if he wanted to come with me, and he readily agreed. We made our way down the tower where we had escaped and noticed that there were iron golems standing around this time. That's new, and they don't look like they work for Horace. I wasn't expecting you to come back here. I flipped around to see one of the iron golems standing right behind me. Are you one of the guards? Not exactly. I bartered with some of Horace's goons that are corrupt. They agreed to give you to me as a bargaining chip. We weren't expecting you to escape so quickly, however. So you're not my enemy. You just want to sabotage him. Basically. So... Perhaps we can make an arrangement to stop him. What do you have in mind? I'll be in touch. I have some research to do. Just look out for a message from Puck the Honorable. Honorable? You captured my friend Freddy! Sorry, what can I say? I like frog legs. I heard Freddy gulp behind me. Don't worry, I won't eat your friend. But we'll be in touch, Zozo. And just like that, he left without even saying goodbye. Not very polite, but okay. On days 36 to 39, I went venturing into a nearby cave to find some iron ore that could help buff out my equipment. After I found enough, I built a furnace, smelted some iron ingots, and finally made myself an iron sword, iron pickaxe, and some armor. Cool! Looking good! I went digging deeper and even managed to find some diamonds. Yes! Jackpot! This will be great for some upgrades! Before I could start crafting, I heard a noise and something hit me! I turned and saw a skeleton moving around trying to shoot me again. I spewed my golden fire breath at him. Nice! The skeleton froze, but not before dropping his bow. I picked it up and realized it was enchanted. Infinite arrows! Sweet! I returned to my base with the supplies and the bow, hoping to upgrade some of my items and the houses. One of the villagers approached me. Zozo, do you think you could help me with something? Sure, what is it? Bradley, and it's about our home. I thought I had gathered everything when we came here, but I left something important there. Would you come with me? I don't feel safe going by myself. 
Of course, let's go! On days 40 to 43, Bradley and I ventured back to the village on the plains. We hurried to the house to grab his item. What is it you needed so badly? He rummaged around his room under his bed and then whooped in victory. Got it! Is that a paintbrush? Yeah, it's my lucky paintbrush. Are you serious? It's important to me. I shook my head. What a weird kid. But hey, at least he has it now. All of a sudden, I heard a noise outside. Shh, I think there's someone here. I looked out the window, and sure enough, there was some of Horace's goons rummaging around. But they weren't alone. They were being led by a terrifying yak this time. We tried to sneak out quietly, but Bradley made a noise, and they spotted us. Smooth move, Bradley. The goons charged us, and I started to spew golden fire. Within just a few moments, we had nearly taken out all of the goons. The henchman just stood, watching us. Then after a moment, he ran off with the remaining men. Coward! We looked around and noticed the goons had dropped a few healing potions before I had frozen them into gold. Nice! Now we have a little bit bigger of a potion stash, just in case. Sheesh, that was awesome! Was the paintbrush worth it, Bradley? Absolutely! On days 44 to 49, Bradley and I traveled back to the base. Once we arrived, I found a note on my door. Puck the Honorable sent me a message to meet outside my base near the river. It didn't take me long to find him. I've been doing some research about Horus and his plans. I think that if you were able to create a certain item, you can overpower Horus. Great! What is it? An amethyst sword. It's the one thing that will harm Horus, even if he reaches the full extent of his magical powers. And it may just save your life. What do I need to do? You'll need to gather two amethyst crystals and a stick. That's all you'll need to make it. Though I can't promise those crystals won't be guarded by an incredibly dangerous mob. Great. Sounds like a walk in the park. What? You expected saving the world to be easy. Oh, I just wish I hadn't been duped by Horus in the first place. Don't beat yourself up, kid. You'll get the hang of it. Huck handed me a paper with some instructions on it. This should help you. And just like that, he left. Again. I need to tell him it's polite to say your goodbyes. On days 50 to 53, I followed the instructions Puck gave me to find the crystals. It said to go to a cave and consult with the ancient being. I realized that it had led me back to the cave where I had fought the giant spider. As I entered, I noticed that the spider was still there, frozen in gold. He must be the ancient being. I wonder if there's a way I can reverse it. I went up to the spider and tried to shoot an orb at him. Nothing. A fire breath and also nothing. Then I tried to punch him. Suddenly, he turned back into his normal self. He looked down at me angrily. How dare you freeze me? I'm sorry. I was manipulated by the sorcerer to steal your items. But you did steal some of them from the wolf. He softened a little. I did. I was desperate and needed extra protection. Clearly, it did not work. What do you want? I was told that you have information about amethyst crystals. Yes, I was once a guardian of a great multitude of crystals. But I was forced to leave when the cavern was ambushed by an evil warden. It has been a great many years since then. Can you show me where it is? I cannot. When I desired to go back, it was no longer there. Some sort of shifting due to magic. I thanked the spider and left the cave. It was just another dead end. On my way back to the base, I noticed more of Horace's goons fighting a wolf. Hey, that's Lex. Maybe he'll want to help me. I approached as he finished the goons off. Hey, remember me? Zozo, you're alive. Yeah, I am. And I'm trying to defeat the sorcerer. I could really use your skills. Would you want to help me? I don't think I can, Zozo. I'm good at fighting his goons, but he's too powerful. I think you'd be better off on your own. Before I could even argue, he ran off into the distance. Well, that was underwhelming. Maybe he'll change his mind. On days 54 to 57, I went exploring a little more. I found myself close to where I had found Horace that first time. I wondered if he was still at his house. I decided to investigate. When I got closer, I heard voices. The master needs some items taken to him. Make sure they get there safely. It was the henchman I had seen earlier, the yak. He had a few goons and he was dragging some chests of things. It seemed like a good opportunity to attack. Hey, coward! The henchman turned toward me. You just can't get enough, can you? 
He sent the goons forward to attack. I maneuvered around them easily, and within a few moments, most of them were gold statues. The henchman got mad. Before I knew it, he attacked me. Ouch! How is he so fast? I felt my heart's dwindling. He slashed at me again, faster than any other human I had encountered. I tried to breathe my golden fire at him, but it was in vain. I need to get out of here. I hurried and slithered away, retreating into the bushes. Look who's the coward now. The henchman ran off. I didn't dare follow him. I was too weak and needed to go back home. If I can't defeat just one henchman, how am I supposed to defeat a sorcerer? He managed to take out a few of your men, master, but he could not withstand my blows. He is not even close to being ready. Yes, he is weak, but he will get stronger. Just keep attacking. Send out as many men as possible. They're disposable. Will do, master. On days 58 to 62, I made it back to my base. I was met with a much needed surprise. Zozo, we made you something, sweetie. My mom led me to the edge of the base. Whoa, is this a statue of me? It was a hydra, but it wasn't completely gold. It was more of an orange color. Actually, it's a statue of your father. My father? I wanted to tell you earlier, but I didn't know if you were ready. He died right before you were born. He was trying to protect us. He couldn't wait to meet you, Zozo. I looked up at the statue. It's amazing. It's not done yet. We still need some more quartz for the teeth. Would you like to help us? Of course. I headed to the desert where I had previously seen some ruins made out of quartz and collected those materials for the statue. After giving the quartz to mom, she quickly added the teeth to the statue and now it truly looked magnificent. On days 63 to 66, I woke up to someone calling my name. I went outside. It was Lex. Hey, Lex, what's up? I went back to that cave with the spider, and to my surprise, he wasn't a gold statue anymore. Oh yeah, I should have warned you. No harm done. He actually told me that you were looking for a cavern with amethyst crystals in it. I think I might actually know where that is. Really? Show me. Lex led the way to a small desert. We finally arrived at what looked like a rock formation with a door. Great, let's just push open the door and head inside. We tried to push, pull, and roll, but the stone didn't budge. I even tried my golden fire on it. No luck. Hmm, maybe there's a special combination or code word? Maybe, but I have no idea what it might be. It was disappointing, but now I knew where it was. At least I could come back to it later. Let's head back. How about you stay with us? You don't have to be alone, Lex. He sighed. I know. I was wrong and scared. But I know you're our best chance at stopping the sorcerer. Thanks for not giving up on me. Of course. That's what friends do. Lex smiled and we headed home. On day 67 to 70, Bradley approached me again. Hey, Zozo. Do you think you could help me with something else? Is it another paintbrush, Bradley? No, actually. I wanted to practice shooting with the bow I have. Do you think you could help me with some target practice? Of course. Where did you have in mind? There's actually an archery area near my old house. Maybe we can even bring some of the stuff back to the base. That sounds like a great idea. We headed back toward Bradley's old home. When we got there, we noticed some movement outside the houses. Hey, those are the tortoises I met earlier. They told me to take a hike. Maybe we should go. Then I noticed the tortoises were fighting each other over some food. I approached carefully. Hey, friends, remember me? Ugh, you again. We don't need your help, Hydra. You're just making things worse for us. The sorcerer and his goons have driven us out of our homes, and now we hardly have food. The leader came toward me and snapped his teeth. I don't want to hurt you. He snapped at me again, and I had no choice but to spew golden fire at him. After he turned into a statue, I punched him. He quickly came back to life, looking surprised. Why did you do that? Like I said, I'm not here to hurt you. In fact, we would love for you to stay at our base. It's safe, and there's plenty of food. There's no need to fight each other. Thank you, Hydra. We are in your debt. On days 71 to 74, we made it back to the base. This time, we were met with an unwanted surprise. My mom rushed out to us. Zozo, they're attacking the base. We need your help. I slithered over and saw the Yak and his Dread Knights waiting for me. Hey, you don't belong here. The henchman looked at me and just like before, attacked in a flash. 
I still wasn't strong enough, but I knew I needed to protect my friends. Using all of my strength, I let out the largest burst of golden fire I could muster. Not bad, Hydra, but not good enough. Come and find me when you are ready. I'll be waiting with your precious friend. And before I knew it, the henchman left. I had managed to statuify his goons, but he escaped. Again. Wait, what did he say about a friend? I slithered inside as fast as I could and realized that my mother was nowhere to be found. Mom? Mom! He took her, and I had no idea where she went. I retreated to my house, blind with rage. And then I started to cry. This was all too much. How was I ever supposed to defeat anyone like this? I stayed in my house for a while, not letting anyone in. Finally, after a long time, I heard a knock at the door. Zozo, it's Lex. We have something to show you. I reluctantly left the house, not wanting anyone to see me like this. But they needed someone, and I needed to be strong for them. Lex showed me that they had fixed up the crops, bred the animals, and improved the security by building some walls. Great. Thanks, Lex. That's not all. He turned me toward the statue of my dad, and I realized there was a smaller version next to it. It was of my mom. You'll get her back, Zozo. We believe in you. I didn't know what to say. I just nodded. And you are sure he is getting stronger? Yes, master. He is almost to his full form. Excellent. Then the plan is working. The mother will eventually bring him to us. Good work. Thank you, master. On day 75 to 78, Puck the Honorable left me another note. I met him at our customary spot next to the river. Hello again, Zozo. What do you want, Puck? Someone's in a hurry. I have important information and a gift for you. I hear you are having some trouble with Horace's henchmen. I have some important information. His whereabouts. He actually lives very close to Horace. It's a bit hush-hush, but I have my ways. He handed me a map and I went to grab it. Be careful, Zozo. You don't know what you'll find there. Give me the paper, Puck. Do not lose yourself along the way. Remember what you are fighting for. I know what I'm fighting for, Puck. My mom has been taken by those creeps, and I intend on saving her. Then I'm going to put the henchmen and Horace in their rightful place. Puck handed me the paper. Good boy. Now go get your mother back. On day 79 to 84, I raced to the henchman's house. If there was a chance he had my mom, I was going to find her and defeat him once and for all. I followed the directions and found myself outside of a large wall. Inside, it was a modest looking house. This is where the henchman stays? Quite a cozy home he made for himself. I snuck around to see if he was inside, but I didn't see anything. Suddenly, I felt a gust of wind. The yak was standing right behind me. Come to retrieve your mommy. Coming after me was one thing, but involving my mom was a step too far. Your mother gave you everything, and you still can't save her. I'm going to beat you, Yak, for her! I felt a power grow within me, and I leveled up into a fully grown Hydra with 50 hearts. I got bigger, stronger, and even gained the Claw Strike ability. No, this isn't what was supposed to happen. Horace promised me I wouldn't be defeated by you. Be careful who you trust, henchman. And with a swipe of my claws, I defeated him. He burst into golden sparks and was gone. Zozo! I looked and saw my mother coming toward me. She'd managed to escape. Mom, did he hurt you? I'm fine. I'm so proud of you. Look at how strong you are. You look so much like your father did. I'm so glad you're okay. Come on, Mom. Let's get you back home. Oh, and before we go, I found this while I was imprisoned. I figured you might want it. It was a golden key. On days 85 to 89, my mom and I arrived back at the base. Everyone was so happy to see my mom, and they ushered us over to the statues. We almost finished it while you were gone, but we wanted you to put on the finishing touch. Freddy handed me a few glowstone blocks, which I added to my dad's statue, completing his fire breath. It was perfect. And I have more amazing news, Freddy. The golden key my mom found at the henchman's base. I think it's literally the key to getting into the Amethyst Crystal Cave. The henchman and Horace must have known that the Amethyst Sword could foil his grand plan. That's why he had the key to unlock the cavern. I've got to get over there now. I rushed out of the base toward the desert. As I arrived at the door, I felt my heart leap. This is it. It's finally coming together. I used the golden key to open the door. Here I go. 
I made my way down the dark tunnel, which eventually opened up into a cave system. Inside were hundreds of glowing amethyst crystals, all being watched over by a warden. This isn't going to be easy. I got right behind it, and before it knew what was happening, I let out a large burst of golden fire. He let out a terrible scream, but he didn't turn into a statue. I took a swipe at him with my claws instead. This time, he screamed in agony. I kept swiping, avoiding his blows as best as I could. My hearts were dwindling, but after just a few more moments, the warden was gone. Yes! I hurried and collected as many amethyst crystals as I could hold before hurrying out of the cavern. Time to end this, Horus. On days 90 to 94, I exited the cavern, blinking in the sunlight. Nice to see you again, little Hydra. I looked and saw Horus standing right in front of me. I was about to swipe him into oblivion when his magic froze me in place. Please, none of that. I just want to talk. I stared at him. What could you possibly want to talk to me about? You've gone out of your way to torture me. Don't you see, Hydra? I have strengthened you. You have become the Golden Hydra of the Prophecy. All thanks to me. You? You had nothing to do with it. Oh, don't even think for a minute that you would have accomplished anything without me. I made sure that you had difficulties so that you could learn. I made sure that you would eventually get the potion that would bring you to full power. You sabotaged your own henchman? He was disposable at best. But think of what we can do together, little Hydra. We can rule this land together. Of course, it'll need to be destroyed before it can be built back up. But we can accomplish that if you follow me. Never. This is your last chance. Watch the world burn around you before I possess your mind or willingly serve me. I hissed at him. Very well. Somehow, Horus made all my amethyst that I'd worked hard and suffered to collect all disappear. Be sure to be at your best by the full moon, little Hydra. In the meantime, enjoy my wrath. I heard Horus laughing, and then it all went dark. On days 95 to 97, I woke up to pitch black. Where am I? Horus must have buried me underground. I looked at what I assumed was up and started to dig. It wasn't too deep, but by the time I saw sunlight, I was exhausted. I'm getting really tired of him. I tried to catch my breath, but then I noticed a note on the ground next to me. It read, Say goodbye to your honorable friend. My blood turned cold as I raced toward Puck's dungeon. No, 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 please don't let me be too late. When I got there, the whole place was demolished. I looked around, hoping to find anything. And I heard a groan from beneath some rocks. Puck! I moved the rubble and saw him on the ground. He was in really bad shape. I guess Horus figured out who my sources were. You're going to be okay, Puck. Let me help you up. Puck coughed. <coughs> Don't worry about me, Zozo. Go, protect your mom and your friends. He's heading to your base next. And with one last breath, Puck the Honorable passed. I let out a giant roar as I mourned my friend. But I had to get to my base. I needed to stop Horus before he caused any more destruction. On day 98, I arrived too late. What was once my base was now in ruins. I ran around frantically. Mom, Lex, Bradley, Freddy. I didn't hear anyone answer. I slumped down and was about to give up when I heard a small voice. Zozo? I looked up and saw my mom limping towards me. Freddy limped alongside her. Mom, Freddy, where is everyone else? A lot of them didn't make it out, Zozo. Bradley and Lex managed to run and hide with me, but nobody else was fast enough. We're lucky to be alive. I let out another loud roar in agony. Puck was gone. All the villagers and tortoises were gone. I had tried so hard to protect everyone, and I had failed. I felt my whole body slump. Hey, everything is going to be fine. Do you know why? Why? You are the Golden Hydra, and you are going to put a stop to Horus and his destruction. Mom slipped me something. It was a key. Horus dropped this before he left. It must be to his base. I looked at the key in shock. You are going to get back your amethyst crystals, finish the amethyst sword, and you will put a stop to all of this. Promise? Promise. 
On day 99, I headed to Horace's base. It had massive black walls, and inside there was a huge tower raising high into the sky. I carefully entered the front wall gate. To my surprise, the courtyard was completely empty. I explored a bit and located a back door, probably for the goons, and I used the key to get inside. Freddy, you're the best. I snuck up the passageway and went to open the door to the main chamber. A dread knight spotted me immediately. It's the Golden Hydra. I quickly took him out. So much for being stealthy. I was a Hydra after all, a golden one at that. It was hard to keep a low profile. I opened the chamber, and to my surprise, only Horace stood inside, smiling at me. Did you really think it would be that easy, Hydra? But at last, you're a day early. What exactly was your plan here? Give me back the amethyst crystals, and nobody has to get hurt, Horace. No. I was prepared this time. I smacked him back with my claws and grabbed for the crystals. Before he knew it, I was down the passageway. Stop that Hydra! I made it back to my base and hurriedly crafted the amethyst sword out of the two amethyst crystals and a stick. It was time to defeat Horus once and for all. It on day 100, I made my way back to Horus's base. Perfect, a dramatic ending, just like I wanted. Horus was waiting for me outside. Are you ready for your reign of terror to finally end, Horus? You're exactly where I want you, Zozo. When this battle is over, I'll take control of your body and use you as just another tool to take over this world. Not if me and the Amethyst Sword have anything to say about it. This time, I wasn't playing around. He fired a magical energy blast at me, but I was so strong now, I tanked it and ran right in. Oh, no, I may have made an error here. But the time for talk was over. I ran in and hit him with the Amethyst Sword again and again, weakening him a little more each time. He unleashed his guards on me, but they were taken care of quickly. Many sword swings later, when Horus was on the edge of defeat, I stopped attacking and stepped back for a moment. You can't win! I am an all-powerful sorcerer! Silence is golden, Horus! With one blast of my golden spit, Horus was turned into a harmless golden statue forevermore! At long last, the creatures of the overworld can breathe easy again! On day one, I spawned into the Badlands as an awesome lava dinosaur! I may only be a baby, but I think when I grow up, I'm gonna be the coolest creature of all! But being that cool comes with certain drawbacks. You attract a lot of attention! That must have been why a terrifying soul blaze suddenly appeared in front of me! Behold, tis I, the ultimate being, the Lord of Souls, and I wish to add yours to my collection, Zozo. Wait, how do you know my name? I know all. I see all, and in time, I will be able to do all. I will absorb your power, little lava dinosaur, and with it, I will become unstoppable. My power? I don't even have any power yet. Oh, but you will, Zozo. You will. Over the next 100 days, I will challenge you. I will hunt you. Through these trials, I will make you strong, and then, when you reach the height of your power, you will be mine! Before I could try to talk him out of this wild plan, he fired an energy blast from his supercharged Soul Blaze rods! I ran as fast as I could, terrified by what he planned to do! I want to get stronger, but if I do, will I just be playing into the Lord of Souls hands? This is gonna be a tough one! On day two, I ventured out deeper into the Badlands to try and see what I could find. There's still a lot I don't know about this place. It's called the Badlands, but it seems pretty okay to me so far. I've got to be careful though. I only have 10 hearts, so I want to stay out of trouble. Suddenly, I heard my stomach growl. Oh, that's right. I've been alive for almost two days and I haven't eaten yet. I better find some snacks. I wasn't sure what kind of food I could find in the Badlands, but as I was looking around, I spotted something red on the ground. Hey, apples, perfect! An apple a day keeps the Lord of Souls away. That's the saying, right? I ate the apples and felt much better with a full stomach. Good luck didn't last long. I saw some Vex Piglins scowling at me and flying toward me. Face us, Zozo. The Lord of Souls sent us to test your strength. No, I don't wanna. Too bad. Time to fight. 
It got even closer and started to attack. I did my best to defend myself, but I had never fought anyone before, and these guys were way too strong for me. All I could do was run away from those terrifying Vex piglins, and in the process, I ran into a spider llama. Follow me. These piggies can eat my dust. On day three, the spider llama led me to a campfire further out in the Badlands. It was a huge relief to find a cozy, safe place to rest for a while. This is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mostly mean sleeping and hanging out with my buddy, the fire guardian. I don't see a fire guardian. Until I did see one, standing by the fire. That's because I'm over here, guarding this fire. Hello there, baby lava dinosaur. I see you too are being forged in fire. May your flame burn brightly. Thanks, I'm Zozo, by the way. It's nice to meet you, Zozo. My name is Dennis, and this spider llama who brought you here goes by the name Zack. I'm grateful for both of you. Those Vex piglins cornered me in a totally unfair fight. They were working for this awful Soul Blaze. Big scary guy, maybe you know him? Unfortunately, I do. The Lord of Souls means to add you to his collection, I assume? Yes, he said he's going to wait for me to become strong. Then he's going to take my soul and steal my power. So I decided I'm not going to get stronger at all. That way, he won't get me. I'll just lay low and stay out of trouble. I know it seems frightening, but you must seek strength and progress anyway. But you can't allow the Lord of Souls to steal that strength. Instead, you must use it against him so that he never takes another soul again. Oh, jeez, that sounds like a lot of work. It will be, but you will have help. No dinosaur is truly alone in this world, not when he has friends. Go with Zack and build your first base. We'll develop from there. Okay, then it's decided. I'll become the biggest, strongest lava dinosaur I can, and I'll defeat the Lord of Souls before he can use my power to become unstoppable. It's the right thing to do. From day four to day five, I got to work building my base. First things first, to build my base, I need some tools. I'm gonna need to gather some wood. Can I even touch trees without setting them on fire? I sure hope so. Luckily, me being a lava dinosaur didn't have any effect on the trees, and I was able to gather some wood. Yes. Then I used that wood to craft a wooden pickaxe. Next, I'll get some stone. I used the wooden pickaxe to gather enough stone to craft a full set of stone tools, including a stone sword. My first sword. Check me out. I'm not just a weak little baby dinosaur anymore. Now I'm a baby dinosaur with a sword. But I didn't have time to practice sword fighting. I needed to build a place for me and Zack to stay. I built a small house and added a room for Zack and another room for me. There we go. Home sweet home. Nice digs. Simple, but nice. We can always add more, too. Zack went inside, and I was able to follow him when a skeleton ran up and started attacking me. Luckily, I had my new stone sword, and I was able to defend myself. I was still pretty new to fighting, but I managed to defeat him. After the fight, I started to feel funny. Not in a bad way, but different. I grew a little bigger, and I felt stronger. My hearts increased to 30. Yay! As I yelled, I saw a blast of fire shoot out of my mouth. Cool! Fire breath! I'll have to be careful not to accidentally burn anything down when I talk. But this is awesome! From day 6 to day 8, I decided that it was time for me to explore the area outside of the Badlands. I can't just hang around here forever. I've got to get out there and learn more about being a lava dinosaur. Like, what's the difference between a lava dinosaur and a dragon? Is it that I don't have wings? I gotta find out! I'd also stop the Lord of Souls from stealing my power. And that too. I traveled to the Black Forest. I thought Black Forest was a type of cake, but I don't see any cake here. I guess life is disappointing sometimes. Oh well. I was distracted by the lack of cake when I saw a poor old fisherman being attacked by a nasty thorn wolf. I ran at the wolf with my sword and attacked. It took a while to defeat the thorn wolf and it snarled at me, snapping its jaws. It was pretty scary, but I managed to fight it off. Thank you, young dinosaur. I was afraid that blasted wolf would tear me limb from limb. Yikes, I'm glad he didn't. You need your limbs. I sure do. Can't reel in the fish without them, which is what I was trying to do when I was attacked by that beast. But if you think that thorn wolf was bad, you should see the other guy. The wolf guy, that is. Say, if you manage to defeat that mongrel, maybe you can defeat this monster too. Could you give it a try? Sure, I can try. Just show me where to go. From day 9 to day 10, I followed the fisherman to a place deeper in the Black Forest. Is it just me, or is it getting really creepy in here? It's definitely not just you. You can probably sense the thorn-corrupted wolfman that's taken over this part of the woods. 
which is a shame, because some of the best fishing is over here, and I can't get to it with him attacking anyone who gets too close. That's not fair. I'll do my best to make sure you get your fishing spot back. Up ahead, the thorn-corrupted wolfman appeared. He had nasty matted fur and wild eyes. Ow! Who's trespassing in my forest? It's me, Zozo. You, huh? Well, I was getting pretty hungry. I guess you'll make a nice snack. How about you try some fire breath? I used my fire breath to attack, but the wolfman didn't even flinch. He came back at me and slashed me with his claws. Ow, oh, this might be too tough of a fight for me. I ran back to the fisherman and away from danger as quick as I could. Quick, let's get out of here. You're just giving up. No, I'll come back when I'm stronger. But if that's gonna happen, we need to survive another day. Come on. The fisherman agreed and we both ran out of there until we couldn't hear the wolfman's bone chilling howls anymore. From day 11 to day 12, I led the fisherman back to my base. You can stay here until the Black Forest is a Wolfman free zone. Well, thank you, but is there any room for me? I don't want to be rude, but your home looks pretty small. Well, I can fix that. Just wait right here. I'll build you a room. I got to work and built a nice room for the fisherman to sleep in. When I was finished, I saw that he wasn't where I left him. He had added another room to the base too. What's this? Just a wee token of my appreciation. I thought you might need more room for items and such, so I built you a storage room. I hope you'll find it useful. You didn't have to do that. There is very little we truly have to do in this world. It doesn't mean it isn't worth doing. I'm glad there are nice people out there, and not just the Lord of Souls and his minions. Stay far away from him, my friend. He would love to steal a power like yours. That's what he told me too. I'm going to do my best to defeat him so he can't steal people's power anymore. Be very careful. I've heard rumors that he's been waiting for the chance to absorb the strength of a fire-breathing dragon. And as a lava dinosaur, you're probably the next best thing. Yikes! Talk with the fisherman inspired me to keep working on upgrading my weapons, so I went to a nearby cavern to get some mining done. I gathered some iron ore, which I took back to my base and smelted into iron ingots. Then, I used them to make an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Spiffy! Hey, with another new person staying here, we're going to need more supplies. I should find some animals. I spotted some sheep grazing nearby and decided that they would be perfect. I built a sheep farm for them and herded them into their pen. This place is really coming together! From day 13 to day 15, I was out of ideas for how to get stronger, so I decided to ask Zach for some advice. Hey, you're a tough guy, right? Sure am. Why? Did someone say I wasn't? I'll fight them. No, no, no. I, I just wanted to ask you what you think I should do to get stronger. What should I do? Well, everyone's journey is different, little dude. But I do know that facing your fears is a good way to grow. Maybe try that. Well, I was pretty scared in the Black Forest. I guess I can go back there. I'll just make sure I don't run into the Wolfman. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't mess with the Wolfman. They're always looking for a fight, and they're no fun at parties. I traveled back to the Black Forest, keeping an eye out for the Wolfman. Gotta face my fears. It's so creepy in here, though. Why is this forest so scary? As if to answer my question, some Vex Piglins popped out. Maybe it's because you're nothing but a weak little baby. Oh no, it's those Vex Piglins again. Yep, we've decided you're a waste of the boss's time. It would be better to just get rid of you and find a better target for him. Guess I have to fight you then and face my fears. I used my fire breath to attack, then ran at them with my new iron sword. They fought back, but I dodged them. After a little bit of fire breath and sword action, I was finally able to defeat them. I did it. Zack was right. I do feel stronger. Oh, look, a health potion. They must have dropped it. I picked up the health potion and drank it. My heart increased to 60 and my claws got sharper. Cool, I have a new ability, claw attack. From day 16 to day 19, my exploration took me out of the black forest and into the cypress swamplands. So nice to change out those old trees for some new, different trees. And those different trees brought me good luck because I spotted a book and picked it up. The title said, Better Living Through Exposition. What does that mean? Better take a look inside just to see. Okay, it says that the Lord of Souls hides somewhere dry and hot. So definitely not anywhere nearby then. That's good to know. 
Why read about it? You'll be winding up there soon enough. Vex piglins? But I just defeated you. No, those are some other Vex piglins. There are dozens of us, dozens, and we're all coming after you. Well, this worked before, so I guess I'll try it again. Fire breath, attack! I used my fire breath, but it wasn't quite enough to defeat them. So I followed it up with a few swipes of my claws. Claw attack! Turns out, the Vex piglins were no match for my new and improved claws, and I managed to win the battle! From day 20 to day 22, I headed back home to my base. On the way, I fought a mean-looking spider to test out my new abilities. It was easy to beat, way easier than the Vex piglins. Okay, now I need to get back into the mines and see if I can find some more materials. Zozo needs some iron armor. I don't know why I talked about myself in third person like that. Let's go! I climbed down into the mining cavern and searched until I found some iron ore. Back at my base, I smelted the ore and used the iron ingots to craft an iron chest plate. This thing makes me feel pretty tough. Between this and my new abilities, I think I can finally fight the Wolfman. With my new confidence, and more importantly, my new chest plate, I traveled back to the Black Forest to look for the thorn corrupted Wolfman. I followed the sound of his howl until I found him. When he saw me, he growled. Back again? Good, I was starting to get hungry. And you're bigger now. Even better, I could use a good meal. He came at me with his claws, but I had claws too. I used my claw attack, and he looked shocked at how much damage it did. That didn't stop him though, and he attacked me again. But my iron chest plate protected me from his fangs and claws, and I was able to get the upper hand and win the fight. Splendid. I turned around, and the Lord of Souls was there. You're getting stronger, I see. Soon you will be strong enough, and your power will make me invincible. Or I'll use it to defeat you. Impossible. You were born for this very purpose. A prophecy foretold that the power of a fire-breathing dragon would allow me to conquer all. But I'm a dinosaur. Close enough. I didn't want to stick around to hear what else he had to say, so I got out of there as fast as I could. From day 23 to day 26, I ran away from the Lord of Souls and headed back to my base. I can't stand that guy. At least I have good news for the fishermen. Speak of the devil. You do? I love good news. Yes, the Wolfman is finally gone. You can go back to your favorite fishing spot again. Thank you so much, Zozo. Next time I catch a fish, I'll name it after you. Okay. Next, I went back into the mining cavern to find some more iron ore. Once I had it, I smelted it and used the ingots to craft an iron helmet and boots. Pretty snazzy stuff. While I was admiring my new armor, the fisherman came to talk to me again. Before I head out to catch some fish, I built a perimeter wall for the base. Something to keep us all a little safer here. Just my way of saying thanks for getting rid of that man-eating wolfman. No problem. Whoa, it looks great. From day 27 to day 31, I decided to return to the Cypress Swamplands to see if I could find anything else useful. I found that book here before. Who knows what else I might stumble on? Turns out, the answer was a fire elemental. And he stumbled on me. Excuse me, are you the dragon that got rid of the Vex piglins who were here earlier? I'm a dinosaur. But yeah, that was me. That was really impressive. They were causing a huge mess around here. But before you managed to get them, they got to my house and destroyed it. Any chance you know where I could stay for a while? Follow me. I'll show you the way to my base. I escorted the fire elemental back to my base. Then I collected some fluffy wool from my sheep. You know what, sheep? I think this place is looking a little bit boring. What do you think? The sheep didn't say anything back, but I could tell they agreed. So I put up some decorative banners. Much better. From day 32 to day 35, Zack came to me to ask for help. What's going on? It's Dennis. He's facing some kind of menace. I think that Lord of Souls sent some creeps to mess with him. Oh no, let's go right away. I traveled to Dennis the Fire Guardian's campfire, and by the time we got there, there were Vex piglins all over the place, and I couldn't see Dennis anywhere. You will pay for this. I rushed in and blasted the piglins with my fire breath. Then, I shredded them with my claw attack. I was able to defeat a bunch of them, and once they were out of the way, I saw Dennis fading away. Oh no! Zozo, you came. Thank you. But I'm afraid it's too late for me. Be strong. Help the others. Save 
the world. And just like that, he was gone. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to the Black Forest so I could see how the fisherman was doing at his fishing spot. Before I could get to the fishing spot, a ghost miner drifted out from between two trees and approached me. Well, I'll be. You look like a strong youngin' who might just be able to help out an old timer like me. What do you say? Sure. What do you need? Back before I was a ghost, I was attacked by a deep spider around these parts. Suppose you could destroy that spider so I can finally get my revenge on the critter? Sure. I searched the Black Forest until I found the deep spider. It was pretty easy to defeat with just a blast of my fire breath and a few swipes of my sword. Then I went back to the ghost miner. I did it! Hoo-hee! Feels good to let my soul be at rest. Thank you, Sonny. Speaking of souls, better be careful of yours around that soul eater fella. If he snatches yours, there's no getting it back. He'll absorb all your power and leave nothing but a husk behind. I'll make sure to remember that. Thanks. From day 40 to day 43, I returned home to my base. When I got there, I saw that someone had added a nice new lounge area outside. Wow. This looks so nice. It's the perfect place to curl up with a good book and relax. I'll definitely do that once my quest is complete and the Lord of Souls is dealt with. I wonder who did this? It was me, little dude. Oh, cool. But why? I don't want to cramp your style, but I've got a few buddies that need a place to stay. Mind if they kick it here with us for a bit? Sure, that would be great. A little while later, some other spider llamas came to the base. Zozo, these are my bro bros. Welcome to my base, everybody. After I said hi to the spider llamas, the fire elemental came to see me. I know you've already done a ton to help me, but could you do one more thing? There's a skulk scorpion that's, well, skulking around the ruins of my old house. Until he's gone, I can't rebuild it. I'll write him a strongly worded letter. Just kidding, I'll go out there and see if I can get him to leave. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled back to the Cypress Swamplands to look for that pesky skulk scorpion that was giving the fire elemental so much trouble. Is there a scorpion in the house or around the ruins of the former house? I didn't get an answer. What I got instead was an unwelcome surprise appearance from the Lord of Souls. Why waste your time trying to help other weaklings when you could be growing stronger, when you could be fueling my eventual victory over all? This isn't about you. Foolish Zozo, everything is about me. Now, Hone your combat skills and fight. He disappeared, and in his place, there was a huge, powerful pigless. I don't want to fight you, but I get a feeling I don't have much of a choice. From day 50 to day 53, I battled the pigless. He was much bigger and stronger than me, but I did my best to hold my own. I did have one thing he didn't have, though, fire breath, and my other dinosaur abilities. With the help of those moves and my positive attitude, I managed to defeat him. You may have bested me, but only a pure heart and a diamond sword can defeat the Lord of Souls. With those final words, he vanished into dust. Oh, that was a tough one, but I did it. Oh, hey, sparkly. The piglets dropped some mystical diamonds. I'd better take these with me. They'll probably come in handy later. From day 54 to day 57, I resumed my search for the Skulk Scorpion. No matter what the Lord of the Souls says, I know it's worth it to help out those who need it. I spotted the ruins of a house, and there, nested in the middle of it all, was the Skulk Scorpion. You can't just take this place, it's someone's home. The scorpion just approached me threateningly and attacked. But the scorpion stinger was no match for my claw attack. Pretty soon, I had won. I sprinted back to my base and gave the fire elemental the news. Wonderful, thank you, Zozo. You really are amazing. No wonder the Lord of Souls thinks you're the hero from the prophecy. He's convinced that you're the fabled fire dragon that can give him the power to take over the world. All he needs is for you to come into your full potential. Then he'll steal your soul. I keep saying I'm not a dragon. I know you're a lava dinosaur. I've met others of your kind before. You have many abilities similar to those of dragons, but you're different too. Thank you. I was starting to worry I might be wrong. So many people kept calling me a dragon. Never let anyone tell you who you are, Zozo. You know yourself better than anyone. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to make some quick improvements to the base. I built another sheep pen and found some more sheep to herd into it. Welcome home, little sheep. 
Next, I remembered what the piglet said about a diamond sword. So I went into the cavern and mined until I found some diamonds. I was going to use them to craft a diamond sword, but then I remembered I also picked up those mystical diamonds before. So I used those to make my sword and the other diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe. Afterwards, I exited my base and noticed Zack standing outside my door. Little dude, I added some awesome stuff to the base. Check it. I expanded the resting area outside to make it even better. This looks amazing. I can't wait to hang out here. From day 63 to day 66, I was trying to decide what to do next. I went down into the mines where I was surprised to find the fisherman. Zozo, I was looking for you. I heard that the Lord of Souls has his hideout in the dunes. I thought it might be worth a look. Oh, that's good to know. It's definitely somewhere dry and hot, like that book said. I'll go check it out. I traveled to the dunes and looked around for any sign of the Lord of Souls or his hideout. I didn't want to fight him yet, but I wanted to be as prepared as possible. While I was exploring, I wandered into the domain of a Crimson Phantom. Get out of here! No associates of the Lord of Souls are welcome! Wait! I'm not one! I don't work for him! I'm trying to get rid of him! Oh! That's great news! Sorry for the scare! Hi! My name's Coco! Hi, Coco! I'm Zozo! So, if you're a good guy, does that mean you could help me get rid of the creeper spider that's been lurking around and trying to bite me? Sure does! I'm great at fighting spiders! From day 67 to day 70, I helped Coco the Crimson Phantom with her spider problem! It didn't take long to find the creepy spider. It was creeping around nearby and looking for a chance to bite her. Hey, there's a bug problem here, and I'm the exterminator. I don't think spiders count as bugs, but I like your spirit. I'm not good at bug science, but I'm good at fighting. I blasted the creeper spider with my fire breath, then attacked it with my diamond sword. Pretty soon, it was done for. That spider won't be bothering you anymore. I can't thank you enough. I wish you lots of luck in your quest! From day 71 to day 74, I continued exploring the dunes. If I can figure out where the Lord of Souls lives, I'll know where to go when I'm ready to fight him. Speaking of fighting and adventuring, if you want to see more videos like this, search Zio, Zio! That's Zozo! Me! But that call to action attracted the attention of none other than the Lord of Souls! Zozo, there you are! Uh-oh! Why aren't you cultivating that wonderful power for me? Soon it will be time for me to take it. I tried to blast him with my fire breath, but it didn't even make a mark. He was way too strong. I had to run out of there before it was too late. From day 75 to day 78, I went back to my base and headed into the pool to cool off. I can't believe I had to run away. What if I'm never strong enough to beat him? What if I get just strong enough to help him and I ruin everything? Just then, the fire elemental came to see me. That won't happen, Zozo. I know it. Hey, to get your mind off things, check out what I built. It's a watchtower for the base. I'll admit, that's pretty cool. It's hard to be sad with a watchtower like this. Thanks. After that, my main man, Zack, approached me. If you like that, then how about these apples? Sorry, that was confusing. There aren't any apples, but I do have this mace. Awesome! Let me try it out! When I did, I felt magic coursing through me. I grew bigger and stronger. The gift increased my hearts to 100, and I felt like I had a new power too. I tested it out, and I was right. Whoa, you have a dragon fireball ability. Nope, I have a dinosaur fireball ability. From day 79 to day 84, I returned to the dunes, feeling much more confident in myself as a hero. I didn't see the Lord of Souls anywhere, but I did see a zombie shuffling around and tested my fireball out on it. It worked! I blew that zombie to smithereens! Hey, that was really cool! A big axolotl came over to congratulate me. I got this for my uncle's birthday, but I actually think you should have it. You're a way better fighter than him. He handed me diamond leggings. Whoa, thanks. Sorry to your uncle, though. Nah, it's fine. I'll just get him a gift card. His leggings will go great with the rest of my diamond gear. From day 85 to day 89, I headed back to my base to show my friends my new diamond leggings. But when I got there, it was under attack. There were Vex piglins all over the place. Hey, get out of here. Stop. I rushed towards the piglins and started to defeat them one by one using my mace. But some of them managed to run off and I gave chase. I lost sight of them after a while, but I didn't give up. 
I heard a loud buzzing sound though, and when I looked in its direction, I saw a giant mosquito. Ah, don't bite me. Bite you? Oh no, that's not why I'm here. I need help breaking apart this block. I've been trying for days, but I have no tools, and my little bug arms are too weak. Quickly, I broke the block apart with my pickaxe. There you go. Gotta run. Bye. I'll never forget you, kind stranger. From day 90 to day 94, I tracked the Vex Piglins to a spot in the dunes. This place looks super evil. Oh, this must be the lair of the Lord of Souls. I'd better not get too close. I noticed something I hadn't seen before. The Vex Piglins had an Enderblaze with them. They were all listening to him and following his orders. We messed that place up good, huh? Yeah, the Lord of Souls will be pleased with your service. As his right-hand man, I will deliver reports of your loyalty. I rushed out of my hiding place and confronted the Enderblaze. So you're the one who messed up my base. I guess this fireball is for you then. From day 95 to day 97, I began my battle against the Enderblaze. I shot a fireball at him, but he shot a fireball back at me. I dodged it, but just barely. Ouch, that's hot. Glad it didn't hit me, but this guy is really strong. This is my hardest fight yet. I drew my mace and attacked again. This time, I had more luck. I managed to do some damage, and that gave me the confidence to keep going. I got him with my claw attack, my mace again, and that managed to finish him off. When he went down, the Enderblaze dropped a key. This must unlock the Lord of Souls base. This is awesome. Yeah, take the key. Go inside. It's right where the Lord of Souls wants you to be. Once he has your power, he will burn down the entire world to rebuild it in his image. Thank you, Zozo. You will ensure his victory. With that, he was gone. I won't let that be true. It can't. I have to get ready because it's time to prove the Lord of Souls wrong. On day 98, I returned to my base, more determined than ever. I'm almost out of days. I've got to make every moment count. First, the fire elemental came to speak with me. Zozo, you saved my home. Without you, I would have nowhere to go. I know that you can conquer this force of evil. Then came Zack, the spider llama. Little dude. Well, not such a little dude anymore. But you'll always be little dude to me. I'm so proud of you, man. You're gonna do great. Dennis would be proud too. And finally, the fisherman. Sozo, I've brought you a fish. In case you get hungry or need some extra protein. Good luck, brave dinosaur. On day 99, I started my journey to the Lord of Souls base. On the way there, I passed through the Black Forest. I can't believe I used to be scared of this place. That seems like so long ago now. Finally, I reached the base, but it was crawling with Vex Piglins. Oh no, I'll have to fight all of them to get inside. No, you won't. I will. Coco! You solved my pest problem, I'll solve yours. Go, Zozo, get inside. Thank you. Leaving Coco to take on the Vex Piglins, I unlocked the door and ran inside. On day 100, I entered the lair of the Lord of Souls. I had faith in myself, but I was still so scared that I would lose. If the Lord of Souls beat me, it wouldn't only be me who suffered, it would hurt everyone. So I guess the solution to this is don't lose. I found the Lord of Souls waiting for me in his room. Ah, here you are. As foretold, the missing piece in the puzzle of my total domination of all life. Not so fast. I shot a fireball at the Lord of Souls and it hit him. But all he did was laugh. Zozo, fire cannot harm a Lord of Souls. You cannot burn me. I can get you with this. While he was gloating, I attacked him with my mace. He staggered back from the hit. No, impossible, the prophecy. A fire dragon will give me the power I need to ascend to victory. A fire dragon might have helped you become the ultimate ruler of the world, but this lava dinosaur is going to destroy you. I swung my mace again and again as we fought fiercely against each other. Finally, I landed one last hit and the Lord of Souls collapsed on the ground. I guess it turns out that when it comes to prophecies, close enough just doesn't cut it. On day one, I spawned into the ancient forest as an elemental enderman. 
Elemental Enderman? Whoa! So I guess that makes me a guardian of nature. Still, I only have five hearts. In the blink of an eye, before I even realized what was happening, I suddenly warped a few feet away from myself. Oh, wow! I guess Elemental Endermen have the power to teleport, like other Endermen. This just keeps getting cooler and cooler. But I looked around the ancient forest around me and noticed that something was wrong, really wrong. If the ancient forest is the true home of all elemental endermen, how come I'm the only one here? Before I had a chance to ponder this question, a gang of skeleton vanguards turned up and they didn't look happy. Dang, looks like we missed one, boys. We better grab this elemental enderman too, or Mr. Boss is gonna kick all our butts. Wait, who's gonna kick your butt? What does this have to do with me? Sorry, buddy, but orders are orders. We gotta bring you in. I didn't feel like I was strong enough to fight the skeleton vanguards yet, so instead, I used my warping power and got out of there. It would have been good news if the place to the ancient forest I'd teleported to didn't already have a creepy whisperer already waiting for me. I just can't win today. I ran away as fast as I could, eventually just laying down under some ancient tree when I got too tired. I need to figure out why those skeleton vanguards were after me. Also, who's this Mr. Boss guy and what does he have against elemental endermen? On day two, I woke up under the tree with a sore back from sleeping on the ground. Man, I really need to get myself a bed. I wasn't going to just sit and wait around. I wandered out into the forest to start making my own luck. But first, I'm gonna need some tools. I broke down a tree until I had enough wood and sticks to make a crafting bench and a wooden pickaxe, then mined enough stone to make a stone pickaxe and a stone sword, just in case. That's more like it. As I was wandering through the forest, looking for a big enough plot to build my base on, I saw a secret cabin with a wind collar watching me from the doorway. I walked over to say hello. Hmm, it's surprising to see an elemental enderman out here. I thought Mr. Boss's goons nabbed them all. I guess I'm the one who got away. But who is this Mr. Boss guy and why is he making so much trouble for me? It's not just you, if it makes you feel any better. Mr. Boss is a jerk to everyone because he thinks he's the best. And when he thinks someone has more power than him, he tries to destroy them to make himself feel better. What an awful thing to do. I better work hard until I can stop him. You're definitely not going to stop him like that, kid. You look half starved. Here, take these apples. The friendly wind caller gave me a bunch of apples to take with me. I thanked him, then mined some extra stone and wood before going on my way. On day three, I got really lucky. I found some kind of old abandoned structure in the woods where it didn't look like anybody had lived for years. It's a little rundown and creepy, but with a little love and care, this might make a perfect elemental enderman base. So that's exactly what I did. I went through the building, fixing up the broken walls and clearing the cobwebs. It was really coming along. But just as I was starting to make some real progress, I saw a wave whisperer coming right towards my base. I need to take care of this thing before it causes any harm around here. I ran out of the base and drew my stone sword. I warped right over to the Wave Whisperer and took it on, hacking away until it was nothing but XP. So much XP, in fact, that I leveled up. I not only got bigger and went from 5 to 10 hearts, I gained a new ability, turning invisible for a limited time. Mr. Boss is never going to see me coming. With the Wave Whisperer taken care of, I spent the rest of the day fixing up the base. It was looking good as new. From day 4 to day 5, I went deeper into the ancient forest, hoping there I'd find some more materials to help improve the size of my base. After all, with Mr. Boss out there, I really needed to be well defended. I hope the ancient forest will forgive me for using its resources for the greater good. But during my gathering mission, I accidentally ran into the same group of skeleton vanguards who had been chasing me since I spawned here. Well, 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 if it isn't the elemental enderman whose skinny legs got too big for his boots. Now I know you skeleton vanguards are the minions of some guy called Mr. Boss. Why do you even work for someone who's so mean? Cause we're mean too, duh. Plus, he pays well. So if he doesn't like the look of someone and wants them taken care of, we're happy to do what he says. Get up, boys. The skeleton vanguard started attacking me. But this time, I wasn't just going to sit there and take it. I used my stone sword to fight back. And soon enough, I defeated the whole group. From day six to day eight, I found an underground cavern that I'd heard rumors was rich with different materials. It was the perfect place to start my very own mine. I constructed a furnace near the entrance and started mining until I found some veins of iron, exactly what I wanted. 
I mined the iron and used my furnace to make myself some iron ingots. With those, it was a cinch to make myself an iron sword, pickaxe, and a chest plate. This is really gonna up my mining and fighting game. How exciting! And I needed to test those new qualities quickly because a bunch of mossy skeletons were emerging from the darkness and it was already too late to try turning invisible. Guess these guys have a bone to pick with me. Using my new iron sword, I defeated each and every one of the mossy skeletons. This upgraded gear had already paid for itself. From day 9 to day 10, I traveled further from my home and went all the way to the Black Forest so I could sustainably get some wooden blocks from there rather than overusing the ancient forest. Despite its sinister name, the Black Forest was a nice and peaceful place for the most part. I didn't have any trouble going through and cutting down a few trees to collect the blocks. Until, on my way back through the forest, I ran into a big, wide golem with purple veins going through him. I just knew this had to be Mr. Boss. Yo, 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 that dweeby little elemental enderman that's been messing with all my boys. Not cool, just like you. Am I gonna have to teach you some manners, you little tree hugger? I think it's you that needs the lesson in manners, Mr. Boss. Stay out of these forests. I warped right over to him and attacked him with my iron sword, but it had literally no effect. He just laughed, and I backed away, terrified at how strong he was. Nice. That almost tickled. Now it's my turn, you little runt. But if those were the hits he could take, I definitely didn't want to see the ones he could give. I turned invisible and ran away before he could catch me. There's no way I could beat this guy like this. He's just too strong. While I was running away, I turned visible again and ran into a mountaineer who was also in the Black Forest. He looked at me like I was oddly familiar. Running, huh? From Mr. Boss? Wait, how did you know? He's been shaking down everyone around these parts, the big mean bully. Nobody's been strong enough to stop him before, so we all just let him boss us around. Well, that stops here. I'm sick of his bullying. I'm gonna get strong enough to defeat Mr. Boss once and for all. I led the Mountaineer back through the Black Forest. I had made my first ever ally. From day 11 to day 12, I led the Mountaineer back to my base. I see room for improvement, sure, but it's nice to have a roof over my head. Thank you, Zozo. I'm happy to stay here with you. Of course, my first course of action was adding a new room to my base, complete with a bed so that the Mountaineer could sleep. Oh, nice and cozy, just how I like it. I know what you like, bro, but my encounter with Mr. Boss made me realize just how dangerous he was, and I needed to be as tough as possible to survive an encounter with him. That's why I went back to my underground mining cavern to mine some more iron ore. And while I was exploring the old mine, I found something interesting, a bow and some arrows. It's always useful to have a long-range attack. Yoink! While I was smelting the iron ore, it turned out I found that bow just in time. I was attacked by a dread beast that had been hiding out in the cavern. I didn't want it to get too close to me, so I used my bow to take it out at a distance. It was a real lifesaver. With the extra iron ore I gathered, I made myself some new ingots and some new pieces of iron armor. That made me way more defensible. I also had enough to make the axe and the shovel. I'm fully ironed out now. And speaking of defensible, I went back to my base afterwards and started construction on a perimeter wall. I even put up a little sign. No Mr. Boss allowed. Yeah, that'll show him. From day 13 to day 15, I went back to the Windcaller's secret cabin in the ancient forest to tell him how I was doing and share everything I'd learned. It turns out Mr. Boss is way stronger than I thought, Windcaller. I thought he was just some average bully. I had no idea he was some super powerful mob boss. Perhaps I wasn't fully honest with you about what you were going up against, Zozo. Mr. Boss certainly is a nasty customer. He was your average village defending golem once, but one day he went bad. Sick of working for the villagers, he decided that everyone would work for him. Right now, he's probably in the boss base, a special mansion he constructed to house him and his skeleton vanguards. They're up there, feasting all day, planning what evil deeds they'll commit next just for fun and to feel powerful. And so far, nobody has ever been able to defeat him. But Zozo, that doesn't mean you can't be the first. No, I'm sorry, Windcaller, but I think he might just be too powerful. If everyone else has failed to defeat him, I don't think I'm gonna be the exception. Before Windcaller could try to encourage me otherwise, I left back to my base, feeling ashamed. From day 16 to day 19, I started off just sitting around my base, moping. I already felt like a failure, and if I couldn't even stand up to Mr. Boss, I didn't even know why I spawned here. 
but my self-pity was interrupted by the mountaineer approaching me with a quest, an important, personal one. Zozo, I need your help. A good friend of mine, Dottie the Dodo Hippogriff, has been missing in the Crag Gardens for days. I need you to go find her. Of course, Mountaineer, I'll get right on it. I set off on a long journey to the Crag Gardens to find the Mountaineer's friend, Dodie. Lucky for me, but unlucky for her, I almost immediately found her getting attacked by a Dreadlich. Hey, get away from her! This distracted the Dreadlich, giving Dottie a chance to run away. It was just me and the Dreadlich now. You dare come to my domain and tell me what I can and cannot do, Elemental Enderman? Nobody should bully and attack people anywhere, for any reason! Foolish and weak! For this, I shall destroy you where you stand! But it didn't quite turn out that way. Instead, I pulled out my iron sword and fought back! His magic staff allowed him to attack me with his magical plasma, but soon enough, the Dreadlich was defeated, and I'd gained enough XP to level up again! I got bigger, jumped up to 30 hearts, and gained a new power, Elemental Blast! I'll have to test that out on an enemy at some point! With the Dreadlich gone, Dodie came back to thank me for saving her! I'm here because your friend the Mountaineer was really worried about you, Dottie! He sent me back to come look for you! I'm so sorry that I worried him, but I came out here for a very good reason! I was searching for the Scythe of Justice! Oh? What's that? It's a legendary enchanted scythe that apparently lends its users incredible power! It might be exactly what we need to defeat Mr. Boss! Wait, if a weapon like that exists, I might be able to stop Mr. Boss after all! Come with me, Dottie! I have a new plan! And so, Dottie and I started journeying back to my base! From day 20 to day 22, Dottie and I returned to my base, only to find that it was already under attack from another gang of skeleton vanguards! Wow, these jerks really don't know when to quit! Stand back, Dottie! I ran in and defeated those nasty skeleton vanguards with an energy blast, followed by some well-placed slashes with my iron sword! Not so tough now, are you? I extinguished the fires and took some time to build a new section of the base where Dottie could stay while she was hanging out with me in the Mountaineer! This looks so cozy, Zozo! Thank you! Once Dottie was settled in, I spoke to the Mountaineer. He had a plan. Zozo, let's build a statue! I can tell you've been having some motivation issues lately. Maybe if we could build you a cool statue, it'll help keep you inspired and remind you what's important. It's a great idea, Mountaineer! Let's split up and search for some materials! I went out into the ancient forest and gathered up some blocks for the construction. But by the time I came back, I was astonished to find that the Mountaineer had already made some great progress. This is coming on amazingly, Mountaineer! Thanks, Zozo! How about you work on the next bit? My arms could use a rest. While the Mountaineer rested, I went to work on the statue with the blocks I'd collected. Can you tell what it's gonna be? I wonder if you can guess. Oh, and if you want some more exciting Zozo adventures, hit subscribe and ring the bell to never miss another one! From day 23 to day 26, I started off the week by fighting off another gang of nasty mobs, some whisperers! They were descending right onto my base! Why don't you guys respect my personal space? I worked hard on this base! I pulled out my bow and took out each of the whisperers, one by one! Then, I warped out to check and see if they had dropped anything. Turns out, they dropped a few shark tooth arrows. Those would be useful later! I should go search for somewhere to test out these new arrows! That's why I decided to take a trip to the Cypress Swampland, where I'd never been before. And they certainly knew how to roll out the welcome wagon, because it didn't take long for me to be attacked by some dread scuttlers! Good thing I have those arrows, because I wouldn't even want to get near those things! Thanks to a few well-placed shark tooth arrows, the dread scuttlers were soon defeated! I kept exploring until eventually, I ran into a pink pixie! Hi there, I'm Greta, the pink pixie. I don't want to be a bother, but I was wondering if I could ask for a favor. Hi Greta, I'm Zozo, and of course, what's the favor? This big meanie called Mr. Boss chased me out of my home, and now I don't have anywhere to live. Could I come stay with you for a while? My friends tell me that I have great interior design skills. Of course you can come stay with me, Greta. Let's go! We both went back to my base, where I built Greta a nice little room, perfect for a dainty pink pixie. The only thing I didn't expect was for her to have already built something for me. Take a look, Zozo. I built you a relaxation room. It's perfect for chilling out after a long, hard day of trying to defeat evil in the overworld. This is awesome, Greta! Thank you! Let's take some time to relax in there now! 
from day 27 to day 31, I decided to speak to Greta, the Pink Pixie, in the relaxation room and ask her where I might be able to find the Scythe of Justice. Oh wow, the Scythe of Justice! I've heard so many legends! People have told me that the Scythe is strongly in tune with the forces of nature, so it's possible that it could be in the forest. Try the deciduous forest first, that place is pretty darn magical! Taking Greta's advice, I immediately journeyed out to the deciduous forest. It was a very magical place, and I felt my elemental Enderman soul feeling strongly connected to the nature all around me. Until the Illusioner showed up! Yes, it is I, Zozo, the Illusioner. Mr. Boss sent me to ensure that you never get your hands on the Scythe of Justice. The glory shall be mine, mine, mine! Even if I say please? I'm evil, Zozo. Please means nothing to me. Now hold still so I can destroy you. The Illusioner fired an energy blast at me. I took the hit, but thankfully I was able to tank it. I pulled out my sword and attacked the Illusioner until he was begging for mercy. Okay, okay, you've won this time, Zozo. But I'll get you next time. Mark my words, I'll get you next time. And with that, the Illusioner teleported away, and I was free to continue my journey after the Scythe of Justice. From day 32 to day 35, while I was searching through the deciduous forest, I found more pixies, orange ones this time. Hey, orange pixies! I'm in search of the Scythe of Justice, so I can put a stop to Mr. Boss's reign of terror. Any idea where I can find it? Oh, the Scythe of Justice? I know a few things about it, but I'm sorry to tell you, you won't be able to find it here. Mr. Boss and his goons have been all over this forest. If they haven't found it, you won't find it here either. Darn it! How about you guys head back to my base? We can talk more about it there. I'm gonna check just a little further, just in case. The orange pixies left to find their way back to my base while I continued searching. This was a decision I'd come to regret. As soon enough, Mr. Boss jumped out of the shadows again and hit me so hard I lost almost half my hearts. Told you it was my turn. You think you can get away from me, you elemental dork? This is my world, and here what I say goes. Not if I find the scythe of justice, then you're toast. Big if for a little man. Time to take your lumps. There's one problem, Mr. Boss. You can't fight me if you can't see me. I turned invisible right in front of Mr. Boss's face, then ran for the hills. I still wasn't strong enough to fight him just yet. From day 36 to day 39, I returned back to my base, feeling relieved that I'd managed to once again get away from Mr. Boss with my life. I don't want any more close calls like that. I need to be more careful. When I got settled back in, I decided to speak to the Orange Pixies about their knowledge of the Scythe of Justice. Please, tell me everything you know, Orange Pixies. Even the tiniest details might be useful. According to our legends, the Scythe of Justice once resided in the forest. But it doesn't anymore. It was used by a great hero once in the past, and we believe this great hero may have left it among the dunes. You may have more luck finding it there. The dunes, that's perfect. I'll go there soon. Thank you, Orange Pixies. Don't mention it. Oh, one other thing. We couldn't help but notice you're making a statue. While we were waiting for you to come back, we decided to add a little to it. Mind taking a look? Just to make sure we did it right? I went to take a look and was so happy to find that the Orange Pixies had done an amazing job. It was even better than I could have imagined. You've done a fantastic job, guys. Thank you so much for your help. From day 40 to day 43, I was working on some improvements around my base when I saw a traveling scribe approaching the base. He came up and I decided to talk to him. Hey, Mr. Scribe, what brings you here? I heard you're trying to take down Mr. Boss. He hasn't exactly been kind to me in the past, so I'm gonna give you some advice. Head to the Crag Gardens and go west. You'll find some diamonds that will help you on your quest. That sounded like a good tip to me, so I went back to the Crag Gardens and went on a search west for the diamonds. But on the way, I ran into a dangerous Mermex Queen, an insect-like monster who is definitely not friendly. Ugh, and I'm afraid of bugs at the best of times. This is the worst. Thankfully, she wasn't as strong as she looked, and I managed to take her down without too much trouble. Phew, I feel a lot safer now. It dropped Mermex meat. Hmm, not sure that it's going to be tasty, but I am running out of apples, so I'm taking it. I continued my search west until 
just as the scribe said, I found a bunch of diamonds scattered across the ground. Exactly what I needed. I traveled back to the base with the diamonds and crafted myself an awesome diamond sword. I can't wait to show this to Mr. Boss. He won't want to mess with me now. The Mermex meat actually tasted better when cooked than I expected. Although I think Gordon Ramsay would disagree. From day 44 to day 49, I headed out to the dunes. I hope I can find the Scythe of Justice out here. Now if I was the Scythe of Justice, where would I be? As I was exploring and looking around the dunes for any sign of the scythe, I spotted a Vindicator chef being attacked by a Gorgon. He was doing his best to fend off her attacks, but he was definitely in danger. Hey, you leave him alone! I grabbed my diamond sword and rushed in to help the Vindicator chef. With my help, we were able to defeat the Gorgon together. Phew, I'm glad I came along. So am I. That was a real kitchen nightmare. I thought my goose was cooked. Is there anything I can do to thank you? I make a mean lasagna. Thank you. Actually, there is something. Have you heard anything about a scythe of justice? As a matter of fact, I met an isologer when I was on a real experimental ice cream kick. Did you know mustard ice cream isn't very good? Anyway, he mentioned something about a scythe. Maybe he can point you in the right direction. He lives at the top of that dune over there. Thanks. From day 50 to day 53, I followed the directions given to me by the Vindicator Chef. Hello, is there an Isolager around here somewhere? No Isolager here, only your certain doom. The Illusioner appeared in front of me, firing an energy blast right at me. Oh no, not you again. Yes, Zozo, it is I. You have eluded me for too long, and now it is time to taste defeat. No thanks, I'm not hungry. He attacked me again, but I was ready for him. And this time, I was able to defeat him for good. I felt great. Now, where was I? I looked around and spotted a little house on top of the dune. Hello? The chef sent me. I'm Zozo. I'm looking for the Scythe of Justice. The Isolager came out of the house to greet me. Hi, Zozo. Nice to meet you. I'm afraid I have some bad news, though. Mr. Boss's goons came through here and took the scythe away earlier today. Oh no! But here, let me give you something. I hope it helps. He handed me a splash potion of healing. I was feeling pretty discouraged about the scythe, but with the illusioner finally defeated, I knew I was making progress. I couldn't lose hope yet. From day 54 to day 57, I traveled back to my base. The mountaineer was waiting for me. Welcome back, Zozo. Hey, while you were gone, I decided to fix up the place a little bit. Take a look around. Let me know what you think. I walked around and checked things out. He added some guard towers. Wow. These will be great for protecting the base. Thanks so much for your help. Glad you like them. Just then, Dottie the Dodo Hippogriff came running up to me. Sozo, thank goodness you're back. I need your help. I left my molde tool in the forest fault. Can you help me get it back? I'd go myself, but I don't have any fighting experience if the bad guys show up. Sure, I'll go look for it now. I headed over to the forest fault and searched for the multi-tool. Hey, there it is. I grabbed it for Dottie and brought it back to my base without running into any trouble. Yes. Here you go. Thank you, Zozo. Here, while you were gone, I found this for you. It's a flaming bow. Maybe you can use it. From day 58 to day 62, one of the orange pixies came and woke me up. Good morning, Zozo. Sorry to wake you, but I'm just too excited. Please, come and see the work we've done on the statue. It looks so good. I went to check out the statue, and it was true. It looked awesome. This is so cool. Thank you for your hard work on it. But I didn't get to admire the statue for long. A group of skeleton vanguards ambushed me, and the orange pixie attacking us. Well, well, well. Looks like Loser here got himself a Loser statue. It's an awesome statue. You're just mean. I did my best to fight them off, but I couldn't stop them from destroying the orange pixie. No, how could you? It's fun to be bad. Duh. I couldn't let them get away with that. I summoned the strength to keep fighting, and I defeated all of them except for one, who managed to get away and run off into the woods. I won't let them or Mr. Boss get away with this. From day 63 to day 66, I chased the runaway skeleton vanguard all the way to the dunes. The dunes? What's he doing all the way out here? As I looked around, I spotted an empty chest. Hey, I wonder if the scythe used to be in here. Then, of course, the vanguard popped up behind me. 
Don't bother looking for the Scythe of Justice. It's long, long gone, hidden in a place where you'll never be able to find it. It's in the forest vault, but you'll never get it back. Ever! Oh, you're gonna cry about it? There's nothing wrong with crying when you're sad, but no, not right now. First, I'm gonna fight you. I drew my sword and attacked the skeleton vanguard. This time, I was ready, and he couldn't surprise me. I was able to hit him with the flame bow and avenge the Ord Pixie. From day 67 to day 70, I traveled to the forest fault again. But this time, it looked different. Mr. Boss and his goons had definitely been here, and there was a squall golem standing at the entrance to the area. Tiny, pathetic, showing up in places he shouldn't. You must be Zozo. I'm not any of those things. Well, I am Zozo, but none of the other ones. Run on home before I have to teach you a painful lesson. Not without the scythe of justice. He just laughed at me, then rushed forward and attacked. I tried my best to fight back, but he was much stronger than me, and I was worried I wouldn't make it out of this one alive. He knocked me back. Uh-oh, I'm in over my head here. I didn't have another choice. I had to keep doing my best. I climbed back to my feet and hoped my trusty diamond sword would be enough to save me. I dodged the squaw golem's next attack and got the better of him. Ow! Oh, that hurt, you little brat. Before I could finish the fight, he ran off and disappeared from sight. No time to go after him. I have to get the scythe. From day 71 to day 74, I entered the forest fault to look for the scythe of justice. But there was nothing there. All I could find was a note. Oops, guess you were too late. No scythe for Zozo. I took it for myself. Too bad. So sad. Sign, Mr. Boss. Oh no, he already took it. I'll have to keep looking and find another way to defeat Mr. Boss. From day 75 to day 78, I returned to my base to try and figure out my next step. When I got there, the mountaineer was waiting for me. Hey, Zozo, you look kind of sad. What's wrong? Mr. Boss took the scythe before I could get it. I'm so disappointed. Maybe seeing some of these improvements I made to the base will make you feel better. Come check it out. He had added banners and shelves while I was gone. Wow, these really tie the room together. Nice job. Oh, also, I went out exploring and I found this. Whoa, netherite ore. I can use this to upgrade my sword. I took the netherite ore and used it to craft a netherite sword. This is great. Thank you so much. Oh, what a nice moment. Too bad I have to destroy you now. The Squall Golem, he was back. But this time, I had a new, stronger sword to fight him with. When he attacked me, I dodged and came back at him with the netherite sword. Before too long, I had defeated the Squall Golem. I felt myself getting stronger and my heart increased to 60. I feel like I got a new skill. I concentrated and found out that I had a lightning strike ability now. After that, I spotted something on the ground. He must have dropped this. Hey, a map to the Black Forest. Guess I know where I'm headed next. From day 79 to day 84, I followed the map and traveled to the Black Forest. Ah, oh, there's an X on this map. That usually means something important. Let's see, where's the X? Halt, who goes there? A royal guard was blocking my path. Um, I'm Zozo. Are you a goon of Mr. Boss? Heck no, I'm trying to defeat that guy. Fortuitous, I require help from a noble hero. I have misplaced a very important chest that holds something dear to my heart. Would you aid me in my search? In return, I can provide information about Mr. Boss. Sure, I'll look for it. I searched all over the Black Forest and finally found the chest. I opened it and found a gold sword inside. I brought it back to the guard. My lucky sword. Thank you. My mother gave this to me. I would be so upset if I lost it for good. Mr. Boss's base is located on the edge of the ancient forest. That's near my base. Way too close for comfort. I'll have to make sure I'm really ready when it's time to face him. Hey, do you want to come back to my base with me? I must attend to my royal duties, but thank you for your kind offer. On my way back to my base, I stopped by the secret cabin to visit the Windcaller. Hey, I was wondering if you knew anything about Mr. Boss that might be helpful? I just found out he lives in the forest, not too far from my base, so I need to get ready fast. 
As a matter of fact, yes, you should know that Mr. Boss is very vain, famously so. He can't stand it if someone makes fun of his amethyst crystal growing out of his back. If you insult his crystal, he will become distracted and upset. This will allow you to catch him off guard and maybe the difference between victory and defeat. Insulting his crystal? Good to know. Thanks for your help. From day 90 to day 94, I knew I needed to get to work upgrading my armor if I was going to be ready to take on Mr. Boss. So I headed down into the underground cavern and started mining. I mined harder than I'd ever mined before. My hard work paid off because I found some diamonds. Perfect! Rushed back to my base with the diamonds and used them to craft a full set of diamond armor. I'd like to see Mr. Boss try and beat me with this gear. From day 95 to day 97, the Mountaineer came to talk to me. Zozo, I have great news. We're almost finished with the statue. There's only one piece left that needs to be put in place, and we wanted you to be the one to do it. Really? Me? Yeah, it's your base, it's your statue. It would mean a lot for you to be the one to finish it. I followed him to the statue, and it really looked amazing. He handed me the last piece, and I placed it on the statue. Then I stepped back and looked up at it. Wow! The side of that giant elemental enderman towering above me reminded me what I was fighting for. My species, the elements, and the world. It was a world worth fighting for, and I was going to try my very best. On day 98, I walked around my base, trying to get ready for my face-off with Mr. Boss. Zozo, I was looking for you. I wanted to talk to you about this Mr. Boss fight. I just wanted to say that you're gonna do great. And if you need any help, I can join you in the fight. Thank you, but I think I need to face him alone. I understand. Dottie the Dodo Hippogriff came to see me next. Zozo, I know you're nervous, but you can do this. The good guy always wins, even when it seems like an impossible fight. Thanks, we'll see how it turns out. And if you want to see more Zozo adventures, hit subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss them. I went to see the Pixies, both pink and orange. Zozo, thank you for everything you've done so far. It's been an honor to help you. It really has. Go show that mean Mr. Boss that nice guys don't have to finish last and that being mean never pays in the long run. You all believing in me so much really makes me feel like I can do it. On day 99, I traveled to Mr. Boss's base. It wasn't a very long walk. It had been nearby the whole time. I headed inside, ready for the fight of my life. Immediately, I was attacked by skeleton vanguards. Hey, you weren't invited to this party. Get lost, scram. They attacked me, but with my new armor and my new sword, I was able to defeat them. After I finished with the skeletons, I saw a cage filled with elemental endermen. There you all are. I knew it. I'm not all alone. I have you guys. I let them out of the cage and showed them which way to run to escape. I'll see you all again soon. I have to finish this first. On day 100, I continued fighting my way through Mr. Boss's base. Out of nowhere, a squall golem appeared to attack me. I've had just about enough of you. He rushed at me with a melee attack, but my armor protected me from his damage. Ha! I was ready for you this time. I fought hard, rushing at him before he could attack again. And before I knew it, I had won. He dropped something when he went down, and I grabbed it. I can't believe it. It's the Scythe of Justice, just in time for me to need it the most. I did a quick little celebratory dance, then continued my way through the base. Finally, I reached Mr. Boss's room. I see you made it through my guard. I'm surprised. I thought you'd give up sooner for sure. Well, since you're here, I guess we'll get right to it. He concentrated hard and started to transform. He grew into a bigger, stronger version of himself. Uh-oh. But I couldn't get discouraged now. I grabbed the Scythe of Justice and stood tall. Literally, I felt my bravery making me grow taller as I got bigger and stronger too. My heart increased to 90, and I realized I had gained a new ability too. I was ready for the ultimate showdown. It was a tough fight. I was stronger, but so was Mr. Boss. As he knocked me back into the wall, I remembered what I had learned. Hey, what is that growing out of your back? It looks like a zit. Wait, it's supposed to be a crystal. Yikes. What did you say about my amethyst crystal? How dare you? That is one of my finest possessions. While he was distracted, I used my new ability, Sun God Blast. I unleashed the power of the sun, and Mr. Boss was defeated once and for all. 
With no more bad guys left to defeat, I traveled back home to my base, where my friends and family were all waiting for me. The Pixies were dancing, Dottie and the Mountaineer were eating pie, and all of the Elemental Endermen were waiting to tell me all about the elements. Yeah, things are gonna be good from now on.